I'd like to call the meeting to order. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Can I have a roll call, please? Council Clements? Present. Council Langevin? Excused. Council Livingan? Present. Council Marcucci? Present. Council McDonald? Delayed. Council Nicola? Council Present. Council Regis? Excused. Council Spinelli? Delayed. Council Vandal? Present. Five present, two delayed, two excused. Thank you. Agenda item number three, consider and accept the council minutes of Monday, June 4th, 2012. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay. We have a roll call on that, please. Council Livingood? Yes. Council Maikuchi? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Vandal? Yes. Council Clements? Yes. Five yes? Thank you. Agenda item number four, subcommittee reports A, general government. A meeting of the general government subcommittee was held on Wednesday, June 13th in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were Chairman Spinelli, committee members Councillor Regis and Councillor Vandal, citizen members Stephanie DiMartino and Gabriel LaFleche. Also in attendance were Councillor Marcucci, Councillor Clements, Town Manager Clark, Melinda Ernst, Fournier, Roger, and Estelle Cowett, Michael Jaynes, Dolores Larochel, Holly Christo, Sean Moriarty, and Craig, Craig Carter. Chairman Spinelli called the meeting to order at 7 o'clock, and he advised, of the he advised of the revised agenda and started with agenda item number two. Item, agenda item number two, motion to add agenda item regarding the reconstruction of the airport, agenda item number three. A motion was made by Councillor Regis and seconded by Gabriel, Gabriel LaFleche to add agenda item number three. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, five to nothing. Agenda item number one, discuss and vote to ratify the agreement between the Town of Southbridge and Maya for the property, workers' compensation, and IOD insurance effective July 1, 2012 in accordance with proposals submitted May 31, 2012 and is subsequently amended Town Manager Clark stated as a result of the tornado, the insurance premiums were going to increase. He explained that, that Town Treasurer Mindy Ernst Funyer put together a bid package and told our current provider we were going out to bid and then went out to our previous provider, which was Maya, and asked them to submit a bid. Town Manager Clark stated the school project would be included in this as the school will be ours as of August 7th. Town Manager Clark stated they have budgeted $545,000 for this and Berry Insurance came in with an estimate of $558,000 which is over the budget and the Maya quote, including a discount if they pay up front, is $522,705 which is below the budget. Town Manager Clark explained they have two good vendors in the marketplace and Maya came in with a better bid and recommended to move the insurance back to Maya effective July, 20, July 1, 2012. A discussion was held that Maya also offers incentive programs and training. Councillor Spinelli advised he normally would have recused himself from this consideration because his son-in-law and da daughter both work for Berry Insurance, but since they're not going to be awarded the contract, he feels he has the responsibility as a councillor to vote for this project that he does support. A motion was made by Councillor Regis and seconded by Gabriel LaFleche with a favorable recommendation to council to ratify the agreement between the town of Southbridge and Maya for the property workers' compensation, and IOD insurance effective July 1, 2012 in accordance with proposals submitted May 31, 2012 and is subsequently amended. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, five to nothing. Agenda item number three, discuss and vote to ratify the agreement between the Town of Southbridge and Stantec for phase one of the airport reconstruction in the amount of $134,391.81 as outlined in the proposal attached. Town Manager Clark discussed the timeliness of this as the school project is starting to wind down and he will oversee the construction of the airport. 
Town Manager Clark stated, Stantec has been the group that they have contacted with the contracted, excuse me, with the airport master plan and they are familiar with the airport. The town manager explained that there would be two phases of the project and phase one would replace the blue hangar that was destroyed by the, by the tornado and one other. He stated the third yellow Quonset hut hangar would be done in phase two and the terminal building. Manager Clark advised under Chapter 30B, an exemption for airport-related services, this does not have to be bid, uh, bid out. He spoke about the funding source that includes $875,000 in insurance proceeds, which is money they have. Town Manager Clark expressed the importance to get this going and to be put on the agenda for, the, for tonight's meeting, as it is the start of the construction season. Councillor Clements stated what is being proposed at this point is the construction of 12 hangars, and this work is being funded with insurance proceeds and will benefit the airport and is not coming out of anyone's money. Town Manager Clark confirmed it. A motion was made by Councilor Regis, seconded by, Council, by uh, Gabriel LaFleche with a favorable recommendation to Council to ratify the agreement between the Town of Southbridge and Stantec for phase one of the airport reconstruction in the amount of $134,391.18 as outlined in proposal attached. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, five to nothing. A motion to adjourn was made by Councillor Vandal, seconded by Councillor Regis. Meeting adjourned at 7.25 p.m. Respectfully submitted Stacy Reno, recording clerk. And I don't know if, well, I, I, there wouldn't be any, any more subcommittee meetings at this point. Um, the next item is BDPW, uh, Councillor Vandal. Um, we had a DPW subcommittee meeting on June 6th. Attending were myself, council subcommittee members Langevin and Marcucci, citizen members Mark Moran and Maurice Capstrand. Several concerned parties were also in attendance. Agenda items discussed. Discussion held on water runoff issues on rare properties of homes on Charlton Street. Several citizens expressed their concern, serious drainage problems, DPW aware and will be going out there with engineers and hopefully come up with solution by end of July. Discussion held on sidewalks and railroad tracks by Brookside Apartments and Hook Street. Department of Transportation wants to save the tracks. Work to begin on June 11th at tracks by, by Brookside. Several issues with sidewalks in town and looking into sidewalk work by Brookside. Next project will be Central Street Crossing, then Hook Street. Vote to purchase one of the of new backhoes for highway departments, for highway and sewer department. $8,000 spent on parts to fix 1990 backhoe in past four years. New machine to be shared with sewer department. Motion made to approve purchase in the amount of $60,000 from general fund capital budget and $65,000 from sewer department retained earnings. All in favor. Vote to enter agreement with Stantec con Consultant in the amount of $26,700 and to raise and appropriate from sewer retained earnings for sludge dewatering system at wastewater treatment plant. Motion made to enter into agreement and raise appropriate 26,700 from sewer retained earnings for sludge dewatering system. All in favor. Vote to enter agreement with Sherborne Consolidated for sludge conveyor work at wastewater treatment plant and to replace pots. Motion made to enter into agreement in the amount of $125,000 and to appropriate 50,000 from sewer retained earnings. All in favor. Vote to appropriate funds in the amount of 750000 from water retained earnings for construction, police and engineering oversight for reservoir number five, supply, Eastford Road, clean and line. Uh, motion made to appropriate said funds from water retained earnings, all in favor. Vote to enter into agreement with Stantec in the amount of $45,000 to appropriate funds from water retained earnings for engineering of Denison Hill water storage tank as coating is deteriorating. Motion made to appropriate said funds from water retained earning. All in favor. Vote was taken to enter into executive session to discuss strategy, 
strategy and conduct collective bargaining. Motion made. All in favor. We had a second meeting on uh, June 12th, and attending were myself, Council Subcommittee Members Langevin and Marcucci, Citizen Members Mark Morin and Maurice Capstrand. Several concerned parties were also in attendance. Agenda item discussed. Vote to enter into contract with right. Schmidt Equipment under state contract DCR 461 in the amount of 121600 to purchase a new backhoe for the water department. Will be used mainly for water department. Replaces 25-year-old backhoe, which is unsafe. Having one backhoe to share causes scheduling problems and water department uses, uses backhoe on a daily basis. Motion to enter into contract with Schmidt to purchase new backhoe in the amount of 121,000. Vote four to one, Chairman Vandal opposed. Meeting adjourned at 7.40 p.m. Thank you, that's all I have. Thank you, Councillor. For anybody interested in either one of the uh, subcommittee reports, I believe you can, can get, get your hands on these because Councillor Vandal, I did the abbreviated version, but there is details as to where, those, where the you. money's going. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Okay. Um, C, Education Human Services, that would be Councillor Clements. Thank you, Madam Chair. A meeting of the uh, EHS subcommittee was held Wednesday, June 13th, 2012, in the Confer Rice Conference Room. We had Councillor Marcucci, citizens members Holly Christo and Michael Janes in attendance. Also, Councillor Regis, Councillor Vandal, Councillor Spinelli, Town Manager Clark, Roger and Estelle Cowett, Dolores Larochelle, Sean Moriarty, Craig Carter, and John Pulaski. Called the meeting at 7.30 p.m. The first agenda item was to discuss and vote the change order number seven in the amount of $56,123, revised total as requested by Consigli Construction and recommended by Jocelyn Lesser and Associates for the Middle High School project. Town Manager Clark explained the building will be substantially completed by Monday and will be turned over officially to the town by August 7th. He ex explained they will be slightly under the town's portion of the budget and believes they will be very close to the town's allocation. Town Manager Clark stated a lot of contingencies have been used and explained how the process works. He added that they will probably have change orders from now until October and stated it is not unusual for this type of project. Town Manager Clark discussed change order number seven, which includes MEP, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, and a large portion is the soffit ceiling and sprinkler modifications and building light fixtures. Town Manager Clark stated overall they had a 5% contingency with this project and they reduced it down to 3% 3% contingency. Councillor Clement stated she's surprised with these modifications as they are pretty detailed now in availability and systems that put everything in place before one starts building and expressed disappointment with the request. Town Manager Clark described the process and advised there is a give and take and everything has been vetted through a good length of time. A motion was made by Councillor Marcucci, seconded by Holly Christo, with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve change order number seven in the amount of $56,123. Revised totals as requested by Consulate Construction, recommended by Jocelyn Lester and Associates for the Middle High School Project. Vote by show of hands. All in favor, 4-0. Agenda item two, discuss and vote to approve the proposal for the Cops and Kids program to provide transportation to Streeter Point Recreation Area in Sturbridge as an alternative swim site due to the closure of the state pool. I stated as the state pool is not ready, they are looking to continue this program that has been very well received over the last couple of years and is very well run by the police department. Town Manager Clark stated on the formal agenda for the council meeting they are going to have two components to the same motion. He explained this is a spending program and in the past DCR has funded it because they have not had to pay for lifeguards and use the funding to help transport the kids to Streeter Point. And they have used the funding to help transport the kids to Streeter Point. Town Manager Clark stated the state pool is now under construction this year so it will be done for next summer. Town Manager Clark stated the only change in the motion is to add the wording to accept a contact from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts DCR on the amount of a contract, excuse me, it says contact, should be contract from the Commonwealth of Mass DCR in the amount of $11,020 for the purpose of doing the alternative site. Town Manager Clark stated Sergeant Jose Dingy does a great job for them and this is consistent with what they've done in the past two years. A motion to amend the agenda item was made by Michael Janes and seconded by Councillor Mikucci. Vote by show of hands. All in favor, 4-0. And then I read the main motion, which is vote to approve the proposal for Cops and Kids program to provide transportation to Streeter Point Recreation Area in Sturbridge as an alternate swim site due to the closure of the state pool contingent upon the Commonwealth of Mass Contractor DCR in, again, it should say contract, I think, in there, in the amount of $11,020 
A motion was made by Councillor Micucci and seconded by Michael Jaynes. Vote by show of hands. All in favor, 4-0. We then moved on to agenda item number three, which was to dis discuss the violation and penalty fees regarding trash violations and review charter and bylaws regarding the issue of amending the $250 penalty for rubbish, rubbish violations. I'm going to make a note that I was informed by the recording clerk this evening that um, there was a bit of a limited time on Thursday to get all the minutes done, I assume because of general government and and our meetings and all. So it's, this is an abbreviated version. I'm going to add a few things. And I would ask that um, if we could get an addendum to this, these minutes with a more, um, a more elaborate rendering of what took place at that meeting, because there was a lot of pertinent discussion. And I think if the people would like a copy of that, they should be able to get it. So if that is OK with you, thank you. So let's see, we spoke about, I spoke about the uh, last meeting and stated recycling rates are up, but would like to discuss a change in the bylaw regarding the penalty fees. Chairwoman Clements explained $250 is a lot of money and we are a town with a lot of multifamily dwellings. What I mentioned is that about half of our family dwellings um, are, are rental income properties and we have a lot of people who invest in our town, business owners who invest in our town and they keep their property up and they do a good job and I don't want to see them as being the only ones penalized. The landlords should not be the only ones penalized, it should be the tenants or those who are actually breaking the bylaws. Uh, okay, so move on from there. I, uh, I added that tenants should be responsible for the trash violations, not the property owners. And we had a lot of good discussion as to how that could be done. Um, some that will be implemented even before this bylaw, potential bylaw change. Uh, much discussion was held about the procedures of the trash enforcement, how a change in the penalty structure could affect the residents. Holly Christo stated she believes this level works as it gets people's attention and they should stick with what works. Um, we also had, uh, I believe as Councillor Spinelli commented on the fee structure and the uh, opportunity to have an ABC structure, 2550-100, which is stated in our bylaws versus the 250. And again, we'll have more information for you on that. At that point, Michael Jaynes made a motion to amend section 10-104 to change the wording, schedule of penalties D through F shall be applicable to schedule of penalties A through C shall be applicable, seconded by Councillor Marcucci. Town Manager Clark asked if he wanted it as a bylaw amendment or just a discussion. Chairman Clements stated it is a recommendation from the subcommittee. After discussion about the process, Michael Jaynes rescinded his motion and Councillor Marcucci withdrew her second. We then went on to make a new motion to have a discussion about the amendment of section 10-104 enforcement by amending it to read schedule of penalties D through F to be changed to A through C, which would change the fine structure from 250 to 300 to 25 to 100. Town Manager Clark explained the next steps if the council approved this concept. He stated he would recommend that this go to the Board of Health for review and suggestions, and the council could then take a secondary vote and say, yes, go ahead with the three readings. We want to amend the, I also want you to correct, it says, or the Board of Health could approve, and technically it's a bylaw, and if we were going to amend it with three readings, it would come through council. So again, um, we had more discussion on that. Uh, and then, a, uh, okay, we already had the motion. The motion was made by Michael Jane, seconded by Councilor Micucci. Shall all show, uh, show of hands, all in favor. It was a three to one, Holly Christo was opposed. I also want to comment at that meeting a number of other issues in regard to recycling and, and trash came up. Mr. Pulaski had many good comments. And again, once we have that addendum, we'll read them at the council meeting or uh, the next council meeting to make sure that everybody's information is put there for the public. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Agenda item number four, discuss and possibly vote to approve additional new middle high school items as a result of the school building committee meeting 61312 at 5 p.m. Chairwoman Clements recommended to remove this item as they were, there were none. Town Manager Clark noted at the school building committee they stated there would be a request for a meeting to be held in July. Other, on other information, Roger Cowett expressed concern for properties with unregistered vehicles or junk vehicles and also buildings that are not up to code. Chairwoman Clements recommended that he contact the inspections and health department for assistance. Town Manager Clark stated the community walks will start on Friday mornings again and stated if there are specific areas that they would like them to look at, they would be happy to do so. A motion to adjourn was made by Michael Jaynes and seconded by Councillor Micucci. All in favor, 4-0. And the meeting ended at 8.55. And there's no other meeting scheduled at this time. Thank you. Thank you. D, Planning and Development. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have no report and I have no meeting scheduled. Okay, thank you. E is Protection of Persons and Property. Meeting of the Prote Protection of Persons and Property Subcommittee <clears throat> was held on Monday, June 6th. 
In the Rice Conference Room, in attendance were Chairman Langevin, citizens member, citizen members Roger Cowett and Monique Manna. Also in attendance were myself, Councillor Clements, Councillor Vandal, Town Manager Clark, Police Chief Charette, Acting Fire Chief DeFranzo, Auburn Fire Chief Stephen Coleman, and Estelle Cowett. The meeting was called to order at 7 p.m. Agenda item number one, vote to confirm the appointment of Mark W. DeFranzo as Fire Chief for the Town of Southbridge. Mr. Clark explained the process in hiring of a fire chief is twofold. 13 applications were received. Two were rejected due to failure to meet the guidelines. Seven candidates were selected and six were interviewed by a panel of four. All four interviewers agreed that Mr. DeFranzo was by far the best candidate. The second part of the process is the contract negotiations. The contract was sent to Employment Council and conflicts with the stat and conflicts with the statute were found. Mass General Law Chapter 41, Section 42 calls for an indefinite term, while a three-year term is part of Chapter 41, Section 42A. After researching the records, it was found that there is a split in the past town practices. Chapter 42A was never, never for, formally adopted by council. There are two options to adhere to the law. The first option would be to vote to appoint and make the term indefinite and change the contract accordingly. Option number two would be to make the term three years, adopt the contract as is, and formally adopt the weak chief statute of 42A. The strong chief language, section 42, runs askew to the charter language. Chief Charette and Chief Coleman gave their opinion and recommendation for section 42 as an indefinite appointment. I agreed. A motion was made by Monique Manna and seconded by Roger Cowett with a favorable recommendation to Council to confirm the appointment of Mark W. DeFranzo as Fire Chief for the Town of Southbridge for an indefinite term effective June 18, 2012 and to ratify the employment agreement consistent with Chapter 48, Section 42. Vote by a show of hands. All in favor, three to nothing. A motion to adjourn was made by Councilor Langevin and seconded by Mr. Cowett. Um, the meeting adjourned at 7.45 p.m. Respectfully submitted, Evelyn Rivera, recording clerk. And there will be no other meeting at this point. Okay. Moving right along, agenda item number five is chairwoman's announcements. I have a couple. I'd like to talk a little bit about the charter changes and the fact that, unfortunately, the legislature, being the legislature, is taking a little bit longer to get this passed through. So approximately three weeks ago, I sent a letter to Senator Moore and CC'd um, town, um, State Representative Peter Durant and asked if we could include with our um, charter changes a piece that will allow us to bring those charter changes, since they will not be ready for our election on June 26th, to the November election, saving the town money to have a special election for them. And at this point, that looks like what we're going to do. So I wanted to let you know that. I also wanted to remind you, speaking of Jan June 26th, that the election for Council and school committee will be on June 26th, and I do hope as many of you who are registered to vote do come out and vote on that day. I'd also like to mention one of the, the um, members of our town council is wrapping up six years, and I personally would like to say to you Councillor Livingood, that it's been a pleasure working with you, you. and um, your support on many issues and your reasonableness have always been appreciated. I'm going to miss you. Good luck to you in the future right. and everything that you do, and I hope we still see you around the town council and the uh, town hall. The last thing I want to bring up is a little bit of advertising can't find my paperwork. There is going to be a dinner held in um, July. I had 50 million pieces of paper. Please excuse me. 
Literacy Volunteers is having a dinner on uh, July 9th. It will be at the um, public house. The proceeds from that dinner will go to um, the Literacy Volunteers, which is a tremendous organization. We have tutors in this town who help people learn English as a second language. They teach them how to read. They teach them how to write in English and speak in English. They help, to, they help them to apply for jobs. We even have one tutor who has helped a couple of people apply for um, citizenship. It is a nonprofit. It's a wonderful organization. I can say that now. I'm no longer a part of it, but I was on the board for many years, and it is a great organization. So if you're interested, um, there will be some flyers in the town manager's office. I just wanted to let you know that Monday, July 9th, at the public house will be a, um, an all-you-can-eat buffet, Italian feast, um, all kinds of stuff, ziti and meatballs, eggplant parmesan, salad, dessert, coffee, tea, so on. And adults is $13, and children 4 to 12 years old is $5. You can purchase tickets at the literacy office, which is downstairs in the library or you can call 765-3880 if you have any questions or want to find out where else you can purchase tickets. You can also get tickets at the door on the night of the event. That's all I have. Um, now I'd like to turn it over to the town manager, Mr. Clark. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I do have several this evening. I will endeavor to, to go as quickly as possible, but uh, it's the end of the year. We're trying to get things wrapped up. Uh, one item of uh, fairly significant um, topic is on tornado relief. I was contacted and played a little bit of telephone tag and was finally successful in contacting the Assistant Secretary for Land and Forest Conservation under the Executive Office of um, Energy and Environmental Affairs and was informed on, uh, I think it was actually Thursday afternoon, that the town needed to apply for a grant for 2012 tornado recovery assistance. The town has already applied for FEMA. We received 150,000 eligibility for 150,000 for federally funded roadways, which basically is Pleasant Street and uh, Clements Hill. Uh, we've tried to maximize our return on those by applying for elements. I believe that we've applied for $90,000 worth of work. But we do have a significant unmet need. I know Mr. Butler tends to come up and and has been a very good advocate for some of the needs that are, exist on Brookside as well as on Charlton Street. So when this opportunity came up, I did prepare and submit a grant application, and I have it at your places. Uh, I was told that it was a somewhat informal process and that if I got material in, that it would be given consideration. I submitted a, uh, a two-page request. The total amount is 520000 uh, $520,000, which consists of basically three components, uh, $400,000 in the needed drainage uh, issues on Brookside and Charlton Street, $100,000 for airport improvements related to the installation of a water line and the installation of a hydrant at the airport, which I believe is going to be a, a necessity and would have been a help to us if that had been in for the, um, the tornado, and then $20,000 for debris cleanup. And the debris cleanup would be to do what the town has done in the past, that if folks that have debris on their property come up and put it by the public way, that we would come by and pick it up. And that request was for 20000 They anticipate uh, actually sending us the money, and we need to enter into contract with the Commonwealth of Mass prior to June 30th. So what I would like to request this evening is that the town council authorize the town manager to enter into a contract with the Commonwealth of Mass for this assistance money um, because if we, we won't have another opportunity to convene a council meeting to, to do so. And I certainly would like to have this authorization so if they do award a grant, I have the ability to accept it and to get the money in as quickly as possible for the town. So I guess I would like to kind of formally request that that be a added agenda item for that purpose. I'd need a motion for that. I'll make so, a motion to add an agenda item. Second. You'll second? Okay. Could I have a roll call vote on that, please? Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Seven yes? 
Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I don't know, do you want to do that now or do we want to put it on for an agenda item? I don't know what the pleasure of the council is. We can do it now. Why don't we do it now? I have so many agenda items, it'll just get worse. Okay. So we'll do it. Okay. Okay. So again, um, the wording would be the same, um, that the motion would be the town council authorize the town manager to enter into contract with the Commonwealth of Mass for uh, the 2012 tornado recovery assistance um, and in a grant to up to uh, 520,000. I don't believe we'll get the full amount, but I do believe we have a good opportunity to get the vast majority of that. So, so moved. Second. second. Okay. Roll, um, any other discussion on this now? Roll call, please. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I, I'm sure the uh, residents appreciate it, and hopefully the governor's office is able to to award us some grants. Just uh, a few other quick items, and then I do have one that, that's going to take a little bit. Uh, I was requested on the uh, the folks that received uh, fines and warning letters, uh, how many were uh, single family versus multifamily. It was at one of the subcommittee meetings. Uh, it was actually 333. Uh, fine, uh, warning letters, 101 were from single family homes and 232 were from multifamily homes. So I know I had that request. Our recycling rate is uh, for this last week, I think it was 42.95%, the diversion rate 47.11. And it's uh, nice that we continue to have that go up. In terms of uh, the Center of Hope, is going to be later this week on June 20th and 21st. Uh, the Center of Hope Foundation will be ha helping to save our parks. And they'll be doing some renovation works at Henry Street and Joe Capillo Parks. And they're looking for volunteers that can help out with this effort. All volunteers should contact Martin Dawson at the Center of Hope Foundation at 508-764-4085. And that is part of a uh, community development block grant fund that they received, a grant fund that they received that they're actually giving back to the town to, to do some improvements and putting some kids to work, which is a, uh, a nice opportunity. Could I ask to take one moment of kind of slide this in in your announcements? I did miss one, and it's an important announcement. Um, I'm going to read it. This comes from Rosemary Scrivens. Central Regional Director, Massachusetts Office of Building Deve Business Development. And it was dated Tuesday, June 12th. It's addressed to the town manager and Cassandra Ackley, and it says, Sandy and Chris, I wanted to congratulate you on your recent $900,000 CDBG award. So once again, we have received the award, and this is a big one. And this is for the traffic and circulation planning, as well as the overland street improvements. We'll be doing work there. And I'm sure that there will be other projects that Sandy Ackley's office will be looking at for that. So I just wanted to include that with, with what you're speaking about. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you Madam Chair. Uh, the next item I have is on the uh, Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day. Uh, it's going to be scheduled for uh, Saturday. June 30th from 9 to 1 uh, at the Casella Waste Services Facility at 165 Barefoot Road across from the landfill. The event is open to Southbridge residents only. No commercial waste will be accepted and no latex-based paints will be accepted. For more information, uh, please refer to Cable Access Channel 12. The Southbridge Cultural Council is doing their annual survey. Uh, the surveys are available at the uh, Jacob Edwards Library uh, in the manager's office, as well as the community information table at the main lobby of Town Hall. And so the deadline for submission is August 31st. So if you're interested in having information in which letting the Cultural Council know what kind of programs you'd be interested in, uh, your participation in that survey is greatly appreciated. Also, uh, in terms of the library, they are running, they have an event tonight. Uh, but they also have an event on Thursday, June 21st, uh, Indian Cuisine uh, presentation from 6 to 7.30, if uh, interested. And then the, the last um, 
uh, two items I have. One is I, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about Mike Montigny. Uh, we have had and have been trying to restructure the cable station. We actually brought in a gentleman that came to work for us for a couple days and then left, uh, which was a little bit of an unfortunate occurrence. And we asked Mike if he would uh, serve as the acting cable manager, and he has agreed to do so. We will continue to recruit uh, to see, and, and certainly we hope Mike puts in, and if, if Mike um, is a successful candidate, maybe he becomes permanent. One of the things, though, that when the few times that I've been town manager where we increased rates uh, significantly, and one of the areas at the request of the cable committee at the time was to increase the rates that the local cable folks pay for the, the local portion of the cable bill, which is really a couple of dollars. It's not a lot of the cable bill. But one of the things I said to the cable committee is I wanted to make sure that we actually increase the amount of programming that's on there that people get a, a value for the money. And I just, we actually looked from um, May 28th, 2012 to 618, 2012. We compared that time to the same time last year. And in terms of the number of shows in 2011, there was 15 shows. Four of those shows were under 10 minutes. This year, we had 64 shows and only two shows that were under 10 minutes. So I just really do appreciate and applaud the efforts of the, uh, the cable, um, the new cable station uh, personnel that are in there. And we'd like to give Mike an opportunity uh, through you, Madam Chair, to just say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Clark and uh, the rest of the council. Um, just basically want to introduce myself. I'm not going to come up here too often, but um, Mike Montigny, I've lived in Southbridge my whole life, um, and as this is a part-time position, I do have a full-time job as a paraprofessional at Wells Junior High, uh, working with special needs kids, and I would like to apologize. Last week, um, we had some technical difficulties with getting the, ba the debate on the television, and um, it's on now, it's all working fine, and it will play right through to the elections. Um, basically, just wanted to let you know the, the big things that we're trying to work on. Uh, like we were talking about a second ago, return on investment. Um, 13, Channel 13 has been very fuzzy for a very long time, and we're trying to get that fixed. They had Charter come out before. Um, we actually had problems with graduation a couple days before, and it wasn't going live, so they came out, fixed an amplifier up on the poles, and uh, they're finding a lot of the amplifiers are having issues now. Uh, they're filled with water. So um, we're having Charter actually come back out tomorrow to keep working on that. and. Um, we're actually considering going to fiber optic lines anyways pretty soon, but we're trying to get our old INET system working back up before we go fiber. Um, and basically, as for the shows that are coming up soon from this town, um, we've used a lot of filler from out of town, but in-state shows. You might have seen a fishing show or a, a building show in someone's garage. But we have uh, Memorial Day coming up very soon that Bob Cantera has been working on, and a huge thanks to Bob Cantera for everything he's been doing. He's put in a lot of volunteer work, which is pretty much there as much as me. Um, and uh, we're also gonna start paying cameramen to come out and shoot, because this is only part-time position, so we need some more you know, people helping. It's gonna be kind of like an auxiliary type of position where you put in like four to eight hours of volunteer camera service and you can get paid around uh, $10 an hour for the next hours you do, and that'll start July 1st. But until then, um, I covered the Relay for Life because at the last minute, we didn't have anybody, and that's an important production, I think, to the town. I went out um, between like 5.30 and 9.30, got all those important laps, and uh, Brett French is doing the library demonstration that Mr. Clark mentioned. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to let you guys know we're really working on getting the clarity up, the programming up, return on investment, you know. There's been, um, there was only 10, almost 11 different hours of programming last year, now there's 65. So, just trying to give everybody, and that's just the public channel, because the government and education is run by them, but just wanted to introduce myself and let you guys know what's going on in Southbridge Community Television. Oh yeah. Facebook.com slash Southbridge TV. Please like us. We need to be in touch with the community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Montigny, and welcome. Thank you, Mike. Uh, just a, a couple more, I promise. 
Um, one of the things I realized at one of the subcommittee meetings, I was asked to speculate about future development in the industrial park, and I recognize that I created a little bit of confusion. I'm not a guy that likes to create confusion, so just to take a, a minute, uh, we have basically the, we have the commercial drive has been constructed. Over the next year, I would anticipate that a barefoot road extension would be constructed next. Most of that would be done, would be done by the Casella folks on Casella property. Out of that construction on Commercial Drive, we had 40 acres that is directly adjoining Commercial Drive. We have 10 acres of that that we will very shortly, I hope to have the RFP out tomorrow or the next day for the 10 acres of the park, the approval not required that the council had previously voted. The 30 acres that com comprises the balance of that, in order to access that, it would be most advantageous to access that off of the Barefoot Road extension because it's a higher plateau and we get a better feel for the uh, availability of those lots. Actually, the, the council chairwoman, I went up and drove to, to show her what I had and it is something that when you see it, it's more readily uh, understandable. So when I spoke about a future road and future development and that the road needing to be built, I was referring to the Barefoot Road extension and then the road into the, the, the northern part of the plateau of the 40 acres that the town owns. To that end, one of the things that I've been trying to do as well is to advertise the park, try to raise some levels of awareness for folks to know that we have this. And I just really appreciate uh, Jacqueline Goot, a lady from the Worcester Business Journal on uh, June 10th, put in an article which I like the headline, Hidden Gem, Southbridge Pushes to Grow Business Base. So we had a, I don't, I don't know what page it was on, but it's on their website. So we were successful in, in getting advertising to go beyond just the, uh, the boundaries of Southbridge. And then I also wish to appreciate the efforts of uh, uh, reporter Bryant Lee, who I also took to the site to be able to show him because really a picture's worth a thousand words. Even though I can probably do the thousand words, I thought I would uh, to show him the site. So we took him up there and, and kind of showed the layout. And there was a uh, story, I think it was on page three today, about the new road wade. So uh, you know, this contact of letting people know in the larger environment, certainly the TNG has got a broad distribution base, is one of the things that I strive to do to try to present the town in a positive way to try to facilitate the sale of, of property. And then just uh, to, to the two other couple points here, we do have a second solar RFP that's out that the, uh, the second solar one that we're looking at, solar site would be up by the new middle high school. I know one of the concerns that I heard um, that I tried to respond to is that the new school is energy efficient, but could we do something more with solar? So I thought locating or potentially locating a solar farm up in that area would make some sense. Uh, there's no neighbors and we could do a site that is uh, significant. I will put this material, both of these, in the uh, council package so the council can weigh in and, and look at this. Both uh, deadline dates are after uh, the meetings in July. The second one is 80 Marcy Street, which is the um, old, well, would be old shortly, the old middle school. Uh, we do have an RFP that is out for that, that is constructed very similar to how we did uh, some of the other RFPs uh, in the community for other properties. So that one is now uh, currently being advertised on Compass, the, the state's website. So you know, a lot of work is still going. I know we're kind of at the end of the year. I like to keep moving and, and keep things um, progressing as much as I can. So I just wanted to kind of bring to the board's attention or the council's attention that we have these various items that are uh, currently underway. And I just wanted to, too, I, I recognize that for the entire time that I've been here, I've had an opportunity to work with uh, Councilor Living Good and just wish to say that I really enjoyed our time together. I thought that you were a very progressive mind and, and certainly from a management perspective, uh, I've enjoyed my time in dealing with you and sorry to see you, sorry to see you not put in, but I understand that being a public servant is, uh, is a hard challenge sometimes for, for folks. But certainly appreciate my uh, interactions with you over that time that I've been here. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. Agenda item number seven.
This is swearing in presentation portion, and I don't believe we have anything tonight for that. Agenda item number eight is Citizens Forum. Do I have any citizens who wish to come forward? Please identify yourself and your address, please. Good evening. Monique Mana, 20 Maple Street, Southridge, Mass. First, I want to thank everyone that came out Saturday and helped us with community cleanup. Um, we spent a couple hours um, going down Main Street, going down um, Hamilton and whatnot, and uh, it's sometimes an adventure, I must say. <laughs> it feels good, though, to get out there in the community and, um, you know, and, and do something positive like that. I, I like to see my town um, looking good. Anyways, um, and second, oh, well, we are going to have another community cleanup in July. We have not um, set a date yet, but there will be. Uh, we'll announce that when we do, do set a date. Um, also, I'd like to thank Town Manager Clark for um, touching on the industrial park a little bit, but I do have um, a couple questions um, for Mr. Clark, if, if that's okay. That's for you, um, Council Chair um, mm -hmm. Nicola. Um, first of all, I just want to just be clear on a few things. Just, I, I've just been hearing so many different stories, reading different stories and comments and, and, and whatnot. Um, if I remember correctly, a couple of years ago, was there potential grant money for um, the second phase of the industrial park, um, the road, the, the commercial drive? Was there, was there some potential grant money out there um, for us? And if there was, were we eligible? I mean... Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, from memory, and I'm going from memory. Uh, two things. One is that we had a proposal for about $10 million to do phase one and phase two. At the time, the decision was made to do phase one, which was $6 million. I did submit on behalf of the town a grant request during that stimulus program that they had, uh, the federal government had at that point in time. I think it was for about $4 million is what I put in. Now, that really is going from memory. Uh, the Folks from, I think it was the Philadelphia office or the Washington, D.C. office called me and went through that grant application. So they did have a certain level of interest for that grant. And when they found out that there was neighborhood opposition and that there was uh, some litigation that was involved, they backed away and said not interested. So there was some significant level of interest because they called me. I did not call them. Obviously, we submitted the grant application uh, and they did follow up. Uh, but once they found out there was neighborhood opposition, that, that grant died on the vine. So the litigation, meaning the um, lawsuit that was out there against the um, expansion for the? Actually, the, the one that was specifically related to the project that stopped the project, stopped the project temporarily, was uh, wetlands issues. Um, and also, could that litigation of, um, possibly um, set off people from coming forward and looking at the lots or anything? No. no. Um, actually, I appreciate the opportunity too for a question because just in terms of timing, in order to have, we, I mean, we have a few issues. One issue was we have a C&D facility that's outside, that there's an administrative consent order from DEP that says it shall be brought inside. As part of that administrative consent order, the town's obligation was to provide a roadway and to provide water and sewer. So we have water and sewer in the area. We have the roadway done. The electricity was done at the beginning of this year. And the last remaining step for the sale of lots on that 40 acres was that we had to have a public roadway, because you need to have a public roadway in order to have frontage in order to sell lots. And the council on June 4th took the final step in making that roadway a public roadway so lots can now be, can be sold. So technically, we weren't ready to go to start to sell those lots until the council voted fairly recently in June 4th. So just in terms of the chronology of events, that's the, the chronology of events. Okay, and we were under obligation to fulfill that contract, correct? To get Absolutely. that road. Absolutely. And if we wouldn't have fulfilled our obligation, there would have been litigation against the town, possibly? The administrative consent order was through DEP. So we would be in violation of an administrative consent order through DEP, Department of Environmental Protection. 
If I could just have one more minute, Council Chair, I think I'm over my five, I'm not sure. Um, are there any potential buyers currently? Looking at property up there? The, the town has received a, uh, letter of in, a letter of interest to acquire a portion of that 10 acres that we will be having in the RFP, and we will be sending that RFP directly to that interested buyer and obviously marketing it to whoever is interested. That's why the, the ads are, are key, so people know that we're here and know what we have to offer. That's great news. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is anybody else? Dan Butler, uh, 35 Brookside Road. Um, I wasn't going to come tonight. I was actually sitting home eating dinner, and um, I heard what you said uh, during the uh, town manager's announcements. I got here as fast as I could to see the chiefs here. I did not speed. Um, <laughs> the police chief is in the room, so. I was I, under the speed limit, but uh, I just want to come and um, thank you for what I heard you say. Um, I, you know, that's all I've been asking all along. You know, don't forget about us. Um, what you said was, I mean, great. Uh, 400000 for the drainage problem we're having, and uh, I think you said 20000 for roadside pickup, along with the, the airport stuff. But, I mean, that's, that, I mean that, that would hit the nail on the head. Uh, like, like we all came last week and talked to you about the drainage. Um, that's kind of our priority right now. But, um, but, but yeah, if we, I mean, even one round of some, some brush debris pickup, I mean, that's, that's just great. But I just want to come down here and say thank you. Um, uh, truly, from I'll probably speak for the rest of my neighborhood, but um, um, just if I know I mentioned last time I was here, if there's something you know, I I mentioned it, but it's been a busy week. I haven't got down to the town hall, but um, signatures, anything now? Is this from what you applied to? Um, does it still require any input from us citizens, or are we? I mean, is there anything we can do pray. at this point? Pray. Just keep praying and oh, we do that. Your fingers crossed. <laughs> but um, okay. But uh, yeah, keep us informed if you could. Um, I mean, that's just great news. So just want to come and say thank you very much. So have a good night. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Sean Moriarty, uh, 44 Maggie Lane. I know there's uh, another 40 some odd agenda items, so I'll try to be quick. Uh, just a couple quick notes. Um, and I'm, I'm, I haven't heard it as of yet, and I'm not sure if anybody was going to cover it. More of us just wanted to kind of. Uh, I'll let people know that apparently tomorrow night the, uh, the fire department will have uh, a color guard out at Fenway Park to present the colors before the game. Uh, I thought that was a pretty, uh, pretty nice thing for those guys. Um, also, uh, I know somebody had mentioned already the Relay for Life. Uh, they had just raised just under 190000 uh, with this year's event at the close. Uh, fell about 10000 short of $3 million over the 15 years they've done it. Um, I know that uh, while I was there overnight and everything, I saw Councilor Langevin a few times. I saw Councilor Spinelli walking the track at one point. Uh, if anybody else was there, and I missed you, I apologize. But um, it, it is a big event for the town. Uh, more than 2,000 people come out. Um, and, and as personally a cancer survivor, I think it's a kind of a big deal. Uh, that said, kind of, you know, over the last several months, going through different sorts of uh, uh, viewpoints or a different set of lens at looking certain things, uh, one thing that, that I kind of thought of afterwards was uh, not so much just the town in terms of a, a governmental body, but the town in general. Uh, I think it would be, it'd be great if we could find a way to, to better support uh, this kind of an event, considering it's about 2,000 people. More than half, I would guess, are probably coming from out of town. Uh, it's Southbridge, Sturbridge, Charlton, but as well as beyond. Uh, my team in the last two years, we've had people from Florida, Maryland, Colorado, New Hampshire, Connecticut, uh, and elsewhere. Uh, so those are people coming into town, getting gas, buying sandwiches, possibly, you know, we had people staying at the DOD last year, things like that, and uh, uh, whether it's through Sandy Ackley or, or just local businesses, the downtown partnership, uh, kind of better marketing towards those folks as they come in might be helpful. Uh, and lastly, uh, I suppose it, it, hopefully this grant money can help uh, uh, reduce the need for this, but uh, a few weeks ago I had sent in a letter to the editor to the paper uh, in regards to the tornado uh, anniversary um, and more or less kind of put out there my thoughts as to uh, more community service towards those folks or, or more uh, work in that regard. Um, I hadn't had a whole lot of feedback on that. Um, I know Mr. Butler had, had commented, uh, I spoke to him a few times about it, but we also had uh, 
a woman, Karen Rakowski, who contacted me with an idea as far as a fundraiser. Uh, so more or less kind of trying to promote that today. Uh, very uh, preliminary stages on this, but we're talking about doing some sort of art type of fundraiser uh, with local schools and otherwise uh, to try and do some sort of artwork, kind of present it as a gallery, uh, as a fundraiser, people coming in, especially if the kids are doing it, you figure mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, Uncle Joe, Aunt Sally are all going to come out, pay a nominal fee to get in, perhaps buy something, uh, and those sort of things to help. Uh, originally we talked about for drainage, for the cleanup work, hopefully that grant can kind of take care of this and, and this can be something extra for those folks or or perhaps the uh, the memorial type thing that Mr. Butler has mentioned. So if anyone is, has any interest or thoughts on that, uh, feel free to get in touch with me. Uh, easiest way is uh, by email uh, at seanmoriarty9 at gmail.com, S-H-A-U-N-M-O-R-I-A-R-T-Y, the number nine, at gmail.com. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just on that vein of things, Mr. Moriarty, too, one of the things we, we hadn't mentioned too much about because we're sort of waiting for it to wrap up, but um, the community dinner that was held um, brought in, it was, people were very generous. We had a very large donation um, from Carl Storrs. We had donations from another, other, another number of other entities, cash donations, along with all the product donations. And in the end, it looks like, um, and also Stephanie DiMartino sold uh, more of her t-shirts and submitted that money, and we we're told that we may get a portion of the, race, the road race proceeds that came through town the next day. It's looking like we are over $2,500 or so in, in, in some extra funding, which would potentially, which will go towards um, the recovery mm -hmm. efforts. And I believe there's a, a little bit extra from the last uh, public-private partnership situation that we were trying to do cleanup with. So um, the game plan on that would be to utilize those funds at the per day price, similar to what's in that, what Mr. Uh, Clark mentioned in the grant proposal, to be able to at least get a few days if we can't get the 20. Um, and we've been mentioning that to, to some Mr. Butler and a few others. So we, we hadn't really brought it out yet, but you're asking about some funds, and, and there are some funds now earmarked specifically for right, right. Um, I'm cleanup. Not I'm no, no, I'm just letting you right. know. Just, yeah. just letting the people you know it is happy. There are some other uh, venues too, but I like the idea of doing more certainly. But I just wanted you to know and, um, mm -hmm. that there was some extra funding, and that's it's all earmarked for the tornado um, recovery situation for those people, especially on the Charlton Street Brookside side of things. So, just information. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Kara Donovan. I reside at 80 Pine Ridge Road in Southbridge. Tonight I'm here on behalf of the Southbridge Elementary PTA, and I wanted to just let you know that the Southbridge Elementary PTA held its 20th annual Reach Out and Read Literacy Program on Wednesday, June 9th, 2012. Uh, June 6th, I'm sorry, it was on June 6th, not June 9th. Um, for those unfamiliar with Reach Out and Read, that is when we invite guest readers to come into our elementary schools and read to all the students in our classrooms. Our readers include business managers, um, civil, civil servants, local business owners, retired teachers, parents, members of the Southbridge Optimist Club, um, and then basically anybody else from the community who was interested in taking part in the program. Our goal of Reach Out and Read is to um, relay the message to our students that reading is both fun and very important. Um, the Southbridge Elementary PTA, we purchased all of the books for our readers and then all of the books were later donated to each of the classrooms. So my point tonight to come is to be here and to just graciously thank everybody who participated in that event. We had over 55 readers that came into our schools on that day. Um, there were members from our local banks, local businesses, Hides, Big Bunny, um, United Way, we had a bunch of department heads from Town Hall, we had some parents, we had some retired teachers, and I would personally like to thank um, Town Manager Chris Clark, who was over at West Street School, and um, Councillor Clements, as well as Councillor Livingood, that also participated in our event. I know in the past, Councillor Nicola has um, generously given of her time, and I know Councillor Spinelli's on the list for next year. Um, so again, thank you all for participating. And we would also like to extend our thank you to the principals of those three elementary schools, Diane Shaw, Bryant Montigny, and um, John Riley, as well as to their staff. This is a very uh, worthwhile and important event that we do every year for our children who are in grades K through five, but without the community participation, it wouldn't be possible. And this, again, was our 20th year. So thanks to everybody who participated. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Kara.
My name is Hugh McKinnon, 21 Williams Street, Southbridge. Um, I just have a simple question, uh, perhaps through the chair to the uh, manager or whomever. Um, I've been trying to figure out, uh, I haven't been able to get a hard, fast figure on this, but if anybody has a precise figure on what the town debt is, if that could be offered, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Town debt. The town total debt. Yeah, I, I can get that. I don't have that off the top of my head. Okay. What's his name? Okay. Okay. The manager, I don't know if you heard the manager. We'll, we'll get that information. If you want to follow that question up, Mr. McKinnon at the town manager's office sometime this week, he's going to research that for yeah, you. If, if you stop okay. by or we can provide that information to you. You're welcome. Good evening. My name is Mike Murray, 26 Lynn Lane. Uh, first, I'd like to speak to you as the Vice President of Southbridge Youth Soccer Association. This Saturday, June 23rd, 10 to 12, Southbridge Youth Soccer Association in cooperation with the Optimist Club, is holding our second annual Dribble, Pass, and Shoot contest. Awards will be handed out at 12.30. The contest will be held at Charlton Street Field this Saturday, and it's open to all children ages 6 to 14. Uh, Southbridge Youth Soccer is happy to work with the Optimist Club in offering this soccer contest to the children of Southbridge. Thank you. I could step out of that official role and speak as a citizen. I'd like to discuss the senseless destruction in this town. I could start with town-owned fences being vandalized and dismantled for fun and amusement, or historical field dedication markers being vandalized, or dog owners who have no regard for cleaning up after their pets at town-owned facilities or elsewhere in town. But I've already brought those things to the attention of the proper authorities, and some of those issues are already being worked on. Tonight, I'm here to talk about the senseless destruction of trust in our town government. Destruction of trust brought about by trash actions this town has pursued, not only this year, but in previous years. I am not specifically talking about the punitive trash fines that came about because of the defeat of the smart cart proposal. No, I'm specifically pointing out the rude, erroneous, or less than honest way the benefits of the smart cart were promoted to the people of this town. So many times we were told that if the recycling rates went up, there would need more money for the town of Southbridge. The last EHS meeting exposed that despite recycling rates going up, there would be no monetary benefit to the town. I went to every meeting there was on the smart card issue and asked several times, who is the next closest town on the list and how close are we to surpassing them? I never received a proper answer to that question, and I still want one. Instead, I was repeatedly told that this was the very reason why it was so important to increase our recycling rates. When complaints came to those opposing the smart cart that no alternative solutions were being brought forward, those people in attendance offered suggestions, and some good conversation was had. I offered suggestions. I suggested that a public goal promotion billboard much like what the United Way puts up, be centrally located for the public's buy-in and cooperation. It was suggested as a means to increase communication and education and to work with the people of this town and not against them. Let me tell you, looking back, I feel strongly that that was the moment for an open and honest a transparent form of government to speak up and say that can't happen because there's no mechanism for it. Sadly, it didn't happen, and I think it should have. 
It did finally happen at the last EHS meeting because recycling rates have gone up and the lingering unanswered question resurfaced, revealing a four years too late hidden disclosure. Our health director is the so-called expert in this area. He has oversaw the site assignment conditions since their conception in 2008. The man who you appointed and trusted to provide accurate information to you in order for you to make good decisions for this town has not only let you down, he's let the citizens of the town down. I have no way of knowing when he found out that the site assignment condition number 19 was unenforceable. All I know is what he did and didn't do. I know that for over a year I've listened to him going on about the revenue surcharge benefits for the town for increasing its recycling rate. I also know there's an expert working every day in this field for the last four years he has had ample time to come forward with this 2008 disclosure, but he didn't, and he should have. The lack of disclosure for this information before now is completely unacceptable. I hope you seriously consider that a little later tonight. This has been a very divisive issue, and there are better ways to handle it. Most of you up here have said that you're here. Excuse me, Mr. Murray. Hold on one second. You've reached your five minutes. Will the council entertain? I will entertain that motion. I make a motion that we allow them an additional. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay, continue. Thank you very much. Most of you have said that you're up here and involved to move this town forward. And for that, I thank you for your efforts. However, again, I caution you in how you move the town forward. Let me give you an example. Picture a fish swimming along happily until a big bird swoops down and pulls it from the water and flies away with it. That fish is certainly not going to a better place, but he is still moving forward. Can we please get back to making Southbridge a better place and collectively stop providing reasons to not trust this form of town government. A new solution is necessary to restore the validity of site assignment condition number 19 and the trust of the health department. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Do you wanna, okay, okay. I, I don't wanna belabor it, but I do think fair is fair and, and right is right. In terms of condition 19, I believe it's the uh, the dollar a ton that, that's in addition. And I just wish to, to clarify, um, I certainly do not wish to enter into debate, but the condition is that if the town's recycling rate is significantly superior to others, and again, I'm paraphrasing, so if it's, if it's better than others, the town has the ability to apply a surcharge a dollar a ton onto it. I believe Mr. Pulowski at, at the last EHS meeting brought that up. That's actually a, interesting and, and something that we need, to, we need to do and we need to understand. Certainly in the time that I've been here, our recycling rate has been in 16 to 18%, not something that is gonna kick in that clause. Now, since within the last few months, we're in the 40% range we now, for the first time in that time, will we be at a position in which we can say that we have a better recycling rate than another community. The difficulty is in the details. Just as an example, the town of Sturbridge, which I happen to live, has a recycling center. When you bring your recycled goods, the recycling rate that's given for the town of Sturbridge is a recycling rate for those residents that utilize the recycling center. There's probably about 75% of that community that uses private haulers. Maybe Casella, maybe one of the other haulers. Casella certainly would have some mechanism to tell us what their percentage is, but not the whole town. So the, the health department, and Mr. Morin in particular, have been working diligently for probably about the last year, working with Casella to be able to identify what the recycling rates are in those communities that bring us their goods.
that we would be able to then assess the surcharge. But sometimes things that appear simple aren't quite that simple. But we are working on it. We certainly want to maximize what the town has, and the pur purpose of that is to promote recycling and a promote recycling rate. And now that we're at a point where we have the opportunity to do that, it becomes much more relevant, and we will accelerate those discussions on the recycling rate so we can capture that dollar a ton. But to sit and say, like, we've hid something for a long time, I, I don't believe is really fair criticism. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good evening, Roger Cowett, 82 Tilly Avenue. I'm here to compliment the highway department for doing a terrific job removing the railroad tracks down, down East Main Street, no, across from the Golden Creek, with over 37 years in waiting for removal of those tracks. And I'm, I'm sure the thousands of motorists in the town of Southbridge, as well as communities, are also as well pleased as I am, because now you can save your wear and tear on your, on your brakes and also wear and tear on your, on your front end of your vehicles. Thank you very much. And also, without the, the finances from the town manager and the highway superintendent and all the people made this possible, I, I, I see their tanks, and they, I, they really deserve a round of applause because they did a terrific job and it was long overdue. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. John Pulaski, Old Woodstock Road. Uh, first, I, I'd like to thank Mr. Living Good as well. We haven't always agreed on things, but that doesn't matter. He's a town councilor, I'm not. He served the town for six years. I'd also like to thank Mr. Spinelli and uh, Mrs. Clements uh, uh, for their service. They're incumbents. We don't know if we'll be here at the next meeting, but thank you for your service as well. Uh, one thing I was disappointed to read in the telegram is that uh, Mr. Bernadone, isn't being, uh, isn't being uh, reappointed. I don't know about his service on the liquor board. I know he's been there for many years. But I am disappointed he isn't going to be on the Board of Health. Uh, the interpretation or the reasons that were given in the paper, you know, I'm not with Mr. I don't want to get into a debate with Mr. Clark, but I think that Mr. Bernadone's actions were in the best interest of the health of the people in town, perhaps not the wealth of uh, the budget, but uh, he had an uh, excellent understanding of the issues and the chemistry related to what comes out of the landfill. And I'd like to thank him for his service as well. And I hope that uh, if the voters of town choose to have five members of the Board of Health, that uh, the town manager will respectfully reconsider uh, the, the, the inspiration behind Mr. Bernadone's diligence in protecting the health of the people in this community. Uh, another reason I've come up here tonight uh, well, I, uh, regarding this uh, site assignment issue, there are a handful, perhaps as many as six. I mean, if someone really wanted to be a Philadelphia lawyer, I can see nine places where someone could claim that the site assignment is uh, not being followed. And those aren't suggestions. Those are supposed to be absolute, well, commandments. And when they're out of sync, uh, the Board of Health has the authority to instantaneously, in one meeting, that's a fair enough reason, breaking the site assignment, to uh, hold up or even remove the current site assignment. Now, something else I've read that was contrary to what I heard in the subcommittee meeting, and I know how things can sometimes get garbled uh, with the media, you know, uh, but it suggested that some of the land in the land swap with Casella might be used as uh, additional space uh, an increase of the footprint of the landfill. Now, I just I want it to be clear that if that happens, that will require, um, and I've checked this with the DEP, a major site assignment. So that site assignment we had years ago, we would have to have a major site assignment. And uh, that, that's, that's, going to, that's going to be an expensive process, and uh, I, I just want to bring that to people's attention. Because uh, in, in my opinion, the current uh, conditions aren't being respected. Mr. Clark has mentioned in the past the uh, complications in negotiating with a big company like Casella, but the Board of Health's ability to end that site assignment in one meeting gives Mr. Clark a really big stick in his negotiations. And he can really put the hammer down, and if he sends that invoice, 
but the additional dollar a ton and they fail to meet it, that's a violation of the site assignment and the DEP. Give them a call, they'll back you up on that, 100%. But uh, once again, thank you for your service, all of you, not just those of you that are incumbents. And uh, I hope that a lot of the people in town, let's have a record-breaking turnout this year, a record-breaking turnout, because democracy is a really good thing. Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Any, do I have any other citizens wishing to come forward? Okay, moving on. <coughs> Agenda item number nine. Vote to confirm the appointment of Mark W. DeFranzo as fire chief for the town of Southbridge for an indefinite term effective June 18th, 2012, and to ratify the employment agreement. So moved. Second. In discussion. Councilor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to the town manager, I just want to clarify something. Uh, in, I see in the cover letter of the packet uh, the discussion between the deputy chief pay and the fire chief pay. I just want to be certain the EMT stipend, that's applicable as I see it to the deputy chief's salary. It's not applicable to the fire chief's salary. The final salary is 89000 There will not be a $5,000 stipend for paramedic EMT as the fire chief. Yeah, good, good question, fair question. Uh, in terms of the compensation package, there's two issues. One is in the compensation package, he's entitled to the benefits that non-union employees receive. Um, in, he basically, I, I won't, let me just be more direct. He, it's his intent not to get the EMT stipend, the full $5,000, uh, the paramedic type level. It is his intent to get the benefits that he's eligible for, which would be, the, I think it's the basic, um, the basic um, stipend that he would be eligible for, that's about $3,500. So instead of $5,000, $3,500. By um, town regulation that's been promulgated and in, in place since 2006, he's still eligible to receive that. The previous chief was eligible for that, and uniform personnel not in the union are eligible for that. So he would be eligible for those benefits, which I believe also include uniform allowance and, and things of that nature, that uniformed non-union personnel are eligible for. So he would be eligible for that benefit under that other regulation. Follow up to the Madam Chair. I, I disagree with that. There was uh, the whole purpose of an FLSA exempt employee is the salary is the salary. And it exactly what specific citation states that a, not a, an exempt employee is entitled to union benefits? Uh, because that's certainly not the case. That's something we control. And I'm all in favor of this candidate. I'm all in favor of compensating favorably. But we're paying this person to be a manager and the salary should be commensurate with the duties. And we already pay for the, the town pays for the maintenance of it. He's going to get his continuing education units on duty. The town will pay for that. He can go on duty and he'll be compensated for that. We pay for the renewal of the certification. There's no need to get any additional compensation because the, the, the duties, he's not going to be riding the ambulance. I wouldn't expect a fire chief to be riding the ambulance. There's no need to pay a stipend. That he, the union, I understand why they're entitled to it, but not for a manager. Thank you, Madam Chair. And just, Madam Chair, the Fed, Federal Fair Labor Standards Act sets a minimum floor for compliance when a town, as the case is here, sets a practice or a policy that's in place and the employee meets the criteria of that policy, they're entitled to those benefits. And that policy has been in place at least since 2006. So it is something that's been around for an extended period. So to the councilman's comment, I have to follow the regulations that are in place in terms of the administration of this contract. Madam Chair, if I would just, what I would like to see is if we're, gonna, if we're going to have that discussion, then we should have that policy in front of us, and there should be chapter and verse that says this is exactly why, because I don't believe that's the case. There was much to do about it, uh, which uh, unfortunately, caused some problems with the previous town manager and the fire chief both departing before their, their time, I would say. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Any further discussion on this issue, on this uh, vote? Madam Chair, if I could, I just wish to say that the, the candidate normally would be here this evening. He was uh, greeted by his fiance with a surprise trip and is actually down in Florida. 
So I would like to request that if the vote is favorable on both points that we invite the chief in to be able to do a formal swearing in ceremony so he can take pride in, in, the, in the great accomplishment that hopefully he will receive depending upon the council's vote. Absolutely. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. I just don't want to let the, my comments relative to the uh, stipend damper the thing because I think we have a fine candidate here and uh, uh, I think that the committee did a great job and appreciate the assistance of all the people who served on the committee, in particular uh, Chief Coleman, a very well-respected colleague in District 7, uh, and just want to congratulate them on a good process. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. The uh, committee actually consisted of Chief Stephen Coleman, Police Chief Dan Charette, Town Manager, and myself. Um, and. Um, we unanimously felt that this, that Mark DeFranzo was the best candidate for the position. Um, all right, if there's no other further comments, then I suggest we uh, move on to the roll call, please. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Seven yes? Unanimous. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Agenda item number 10, vote to confirm the reappointment of James Morin as Board of Health Director for a three-year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2015. So moved. Second. Any discussion? A roll call vote, please. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item number 11, vote to confirm the reappointment of Robert G. Caprera, Esquire, as Town Council for a one-year term effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2013. So Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Seven yes. One, two, Okay, I have the next 28 agenda items are all votes for reappointment. And um, would the councils and the council will indulge me, I'm going to ask that as we do each one of these, we do it as a show of hands. But there will be an opportunity for discussion before we do the show of hands, just so we can move this along, if that's okay. So I'm moving on to agenda item number 12. Vote to confirm the reappointment of attorneys Mark Bobrowski and Lisa Mead of Blattman Bobrowski and Mead, LLC, as special municipal counsel for the town of Southbridge for a one-year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2013. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Tw uh, 13, vote to confirm the reappointment of Daniel R. Charette to the Educational Fund Committee for a one-year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2013. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. 14, vote to confirm the reappointment of Arnold Lanny to the Educational Fund Committee for a one-year term effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2013. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. 15, vote to confirm the reappointment of Arnold Lanny to the Scholarship Committee for a one-year term effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2013. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Um, 
16, vote to confirm the reappointment of Arnold Lani to the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission for a one-year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2013. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. 17, vote to confirm the reappointment of A.J. Larichelle to the Educational Fund Committee for a one-year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2013. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. 18, vote to confirm the reappointment of A.J. Larichelle to the Scholarship Commission for a one-year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2013. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. 19, vote to confirm the reappointment of David A. Livingood to the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission for a one-year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2013. So moved. Second. All in favor? Oh, discussion, I'm sorry. Just a question, uh, Madam Chair. I know that we have um, Arnold Lani is one of the members. I thought one of these was the council appointment to the Central Mass Regional, that it's a council member. And I thought that's what Council Livingood was filling for the Central Mass Regional Planning. Is that true? I thought there's more than. I think he is the representative on behalf of the council. I think it's by practice been a member of the council, but I don't think there's a necessity. I, I may be wrong, but I, I don't believe there's. Okay. Oh, I see. Thank you. Thank you. You're here. You want to keep doing this? I'll keep doing it. Oh, good. Get to see you once in a while, maybe. 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 Okay. Um, with that, you have a, you're just waving at me? Hi. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. 20. Vote to, re to confirm the reappointment of Mark DiPietro as a public weigher for a one year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2013. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. 21, vote to confirm the reappointment of Stephen Lovely as a public weigher for a one-year term effective July, July 1st, 2012 through June 20th. That should be June 30th, 2013. So moved. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. 22, vote to confirm the reappointment of Kenneth DeLage as a public weigher for a one-year term effective July First, 2012 through June 30th, 2013. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. 23, vote to confirm the reappointment of Hank Morin as public weigher for a one-year term effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2013. So moved. Second. All in, uh, any discussion? All in favor? Okay. 24, vote to confirm the reappointment of Naito Lamb as parking officer for a one-year term effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2013. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. 25, vote to confirm the reappointment of Leonard J. Vigno to the, Ar the airport commission for a three-year term effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2015. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. 26, vote to confirm the reappointment of John Swenson to the Traffic Commission for a three-year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2015. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. 27, vote to confirm the appointment of Richard Harwood to the Agricultural Commission for a three-year term effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2015. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. 28, vote to confirm the reappointment of Stephen M. Sutton as constable for a three-year term effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2015. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. 29, vote to confirm the reappointment of Thaddeus Dubsky as constable for a three-year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2015. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Sorry, was there any discussion on that one? It was unanimous. 30th, number 30, vote to confirm the reappointment of Maureen Doyle to the Southbridge Trails Committee for a three-year term effective 
July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2015. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. 31, vote to confirm the reappointment of John Sipic to the Board of Registrars for a three-year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2015. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? 32, vote to confirm the reappointment of Rosa McDonald to the Council on Aging for a three-year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2015. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? 33, vote to confirm the reappointment of Helen Lenti to the Historical Commission for a three-year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2015. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. 34, vote to confirm the reappointment of Roland A. Varon to the Recreation Committee for a three-year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2015. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. 35, vote to confirm the reappointment of Joseph Lasavio, Jr. to the Recon Recreation Committee for a three-year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2015. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? 36, vote to confirm the reappointment of Seth LaJoy as library trustee for a three-year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2015. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. 37, vote to confirm the reappointment of Thomas Ayu, Jr. to the Cable Advisory Committee for a three-year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2015. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. 38, vote to confirm the reappointment of Michael P. Daniels to the Cons Conservation Committee for a three-year term effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2015. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. 39, vote to confirm the reappointment of Kathleen Shields as animal control slash dog officer for a one-year term to begin July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2013. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councillor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to the town manager. Mr. Clark, is this um, usually a one-year appointment? I believe it is by, uh, by statute or by practice. I don't know if the chief, I see the chief in the audience. It's usually a split deal. The ACO was usually a three-year. The um, animal inspector and that falls back to old times, you know, the barns and chickens and cows and all that. And typically, that's the one-year part. That's that's us in Boston appointing that person. It, uh, it's still a position in communities, so that that's usually the one-year piece. So this should be a three-year. The, three the animal control itself, correct? Can we make? Uh, can I? I make a motion to change to a three-year term. Do I have a second? Second. second. All in favor of uh, that amendment? Okay. So we're going to change this from a one-year term to a three-year term, and it will read, vote to confirm the reappointment of Kathleen Shields as animal control slash dog officer for a three-year term to begin July 1, 2012 through June 30th, 2015. So moved. That's Second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Okay, and we'll get back to uh, roll call on these. Vote to, this is um, item number 40. Vote to ratify the agreement between the town of Southbridge and Maya for the property, workers' compensation, and IOD insurance effective July 1, 2012 in accordance with proposals submitted May 31, 2012 and as subsequently amended. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Could we have the roll call, please? Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 41, vote to approve change order number seven in the amount of $56,123 
revised total as requested by Consigli Construction and recommended by Jocelyn Lesser and Associates for the Middle High School Project. So moved. Second. Any discussion? We have a roll call, please. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 42, vote to authorize the town manager to enter into a contract with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Recreation and Conservation to fund the proposed $11,020 for the Cops and Kids Summer Program to provide transportation to Streeter Point Recreation in Sturbridge as an, alter, as an alternative su swim site and any other action required to support the summer program due to the reconstruction of the state, state pool on Randolph Street. So moved. Second. Any discussion? We have the roll call on that, please. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 43, vote to ratify the agreement between the town of Southbridge and Schmidt Equipment of North Oxford, Mass, under state contract DCR 461 in the amount of $121,600 to purchase a new backhoe for the water department. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councilor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, now we have two backhoes on the, uh, on the agenda. We talked about one before. This is not the time to be buying new equipment. I'm going to be voting no on this. Uh, and that's, uh, I, I just, I'll have wait till the other one to ask the question about the next one. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Any other? Do you want to speak on just, that? I, yeah, not necessarily on that comment, but in regards to, uh, I was requested at the uh, subcommittee about when the appropriations for 43 and 44 were done. Uh, the 43, the one that's currently was actually appropriated as part of the operating budget. And that was done on May 21st, 2012. So the funding came out of the operating budget for that. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes, Councilor well, Vandal. I'm, I'm going to be voting no on that number 43 mm -hmm. because I, th I thought that one backhoe would have been enough. I, I okayed one for the sewer department, but I didn't want one for the water department because I thought they could share. And they said they can't share because they're conflict or whatever, but I still think, you know, we, we could have went with one and we could have managed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, does anybody else have any comments? Councilor Clements? I just want to make sure, we were um, told about this backhoe at the last meeting. Mr. Cutler talked, and Mr. Blanchard, they explained the present backhoe with its unsafe conditions. Could you potentially elaborate on that for the community so they understand? I think One there's, the there's two things. Them. Both of these machines are uh, exceptionally old. They have a lot of mileage on them in terms of uh, hours. I believe on the water department backhoe that the unit creeps forward uh, unexpectedly. And certainly having folks in the, in the ditch as the machine is, is moving when it's not anticipated to be moving. And we have 138 pieces of equipment in our inventory. We only have two backhoes. So to just have one in case it breaks down really doesn't provide any uh, backup for ourselves. So I think having two in the inventory does make some sense because everything breaks over time. So uh, for this one and the next, uh, the recommendation is to do two uh, for that reason. Thank you. Is that okay. And this is, is it my understanding also from that meeting that this is the backhoe that broke down during the teenage cleanup yeah. efforts? Yes. Yes which only left us with one to take care of our, how many miles of water and sewer lines? 100. It's about 100 miles. Along 100 with miles. everything else. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure that people knew the discussion that happened at subcommittee since we aren't televised those at this point. Okay. Hopefully we will in the future. Thank you. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes, Sorry. Councilor Thank McDonald. Uh, just to add to that, when you look at the hours, 10,000 hours seems like a lot, but when you look at the age of the equipment, it averages out on a, based on a regular work week to 8.75 hours a week that a, the equipment would be used. Uh, I think it could have been repaired, um, would be a lot cheaper. We're looking at now between these two items and the street sweeper, a uh, total of $420,000 that were added to the budget. Now, 
in, in terms of putting in the budget, when you have that much extra to fool around with, that kind of concerns me. Uh, and, and again, looking at the average use, and a lot of the stuff that we do, I've seen contracts that we've outsourced, uh, which this equipment was used. So that's why I'm still I'm going to be voting no. I think we could have done this a different way. Thank you. I can't hear you. I can't hear anything. I can hear you're myself saying. coming back. So that's what I'm I'm adjusting okay. my voice because I can hear myself in the speakers. Okay. <laughs> the cone of silence. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Anybody Madam Chair. Anybody else have anything they want to add? Councilor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just for the general public, and, and this was discussed in subcommittee. From my perspective, my years on the council, and if council members could bear with me, I'm too loud now, right? <laughs> if council members could bear with me, in our subcommittee, um, in my years on council, I've never been appointed to a DPW subcommittee until this year. And I'm going to tell you, I've learned a lot. Um, we've put the DPW department on the back burner. And they're a department just like our police, our fire department. And it seems over the years, not always, but when we have representatives um, come before us from police and fire that, you know, they need new cruises or they need equipment or apparatus, we're concerned about their safety. And we kind of yes those agenda items because of public safety. When you have employees from the DPW and the water and the sewer come before us in a subcommittee meeting and tell us that their equipment is dangerous to them, you know, when you think of a backhoe weighing thousands and thousands of pounds, that this backhoe actually jumps. And we've had employees from DPW, water and sewer, that were almost injured. So I, I have to support this. Um, they've done a great job in maintaining their equipment. You know, just for the water and sewer, there's over, um, I think, 100 miles to cover. Um, they're there for us. And I just think it's unsafe to the employees. And I wouldn't want to see anything happen to anybody for $126,000. Some of their equipment's over 25 years old, and we maintain other equipment in town, and I think it's time that we start looking at the DPW department also. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Livingood. Thank you, Madam Chair. I agree with Councillor Marcucci. I mean, it comes to a point, what price do you put on the life of an employee of the town or an injury? Equipment gets to the point where it's time to replace it. You write it off and get rid of it. Let it be somebody else's problem. This town can't afford to have somebody injured or killed. Most of these people work for this town, live in this town. I don't want to see this town have to go through that. I will support it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilor. Any other, other discussion up here? Okay. Madam Chair? Yes. I did want to point out one more thing. Thank Certainly. you. I'm sorry for interrupting you. It's OK. But it's also come to our attention, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Clark, aren't we putting in close to $10,000 a year on and some of this equipment? On, I believe on this one it's uh, $8,000 over four years, but that's strictly parts only. So if, uh, actually, you know, I'm thinking of the next one, aren't I? I think it was $4,000, $5,000 this year on this al one. alone on this piece. But it's relatively, on both agenda items, it's relatively it is the same story. Oh, yeah. Correct. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? No? Yes, Councillor. Have there been any OSHA citations against this equipment? Municipalities are actually exempt Tom, from could you, uh, OSHA. Would you mind coming up here? Tom Cutler. I'm going to ask Tom Cutler, <laughs> if you don't mind. He closed the door. Who does? Good evening, uh, Good Tom evening. Cutler, Division Manager for Whitewater. Tom Cutler, Division Manager for Whitewater. Good evening. Have there been any OSHA violations or anything on no, that? No, but they also have not been looked at by OSHA, so. Oh, there you go. Mun municipalities are exempt in Massachusetts from uh, OSHA regulation. Are there any other type of agencies that participate or inspect this equipment to, or 
I guess when I'm driving it, this is through you, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, this equipment then is presumed. Um, we do our own self-inspection on this equipment before we take it out to use it, or we realize that it has um, some severe limitations that we are excess, we are asking employees to work on under those conditions? That's correct. They are inspected daily uh, before each use, and we are currently using this equipment with those conditions. You're correct. Wow. Thank All you. set. Council McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to Mr. Cutler. On average, how much would it cost to rent this equipment if we needed to rent it? Uh, I don't have that number offhand, but I, I imagine it could be between 500 and 1,000 a day, roughly. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else have any questions regarding this? Thank you, Mr. Cutler. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. We'll move on to a roll call vote on this, please. Councilor McDonald? No. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? No. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Five yes, two no. Thank you. Agenda item number 44, vote to ratify the agreement between the Town of Southbridge and Schmidt Equipment of North Oxford, Mass, under state contract DCR 461, in the amount of $126,500 for the purchase of a backhoe for the Highway and Sewer Department. So moved. Second. Any discussion on this one? Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to the Town Manager. I'm looking at these spec sheets and they're virtually identical pieces of machinery and I just can't seem to, to find in the documentation why one is $5,000 more than the other. Additional uh, pieces. They put a, uh, a, on the bucket in the back, on the backhoe, they put a thumb which helps them to grab different uh, elements, so they added that feature in because it was a necessary feature that they thought for the operation. Okay, thank you. And this on the funding, uh, Madam Chair, it was actually funded at the June 4th council meeting, uh, 60,000 from borrowing, uh, 65,000 from sewer retained earnings, and then the balance would come out to, uh, from the budget. Any further questions, discussions? Yes. Councillor Vandal. Uh, Madam Chair, I will be voting yes on this one because I only wanted to buy one and share it, and they said that they couldn't share it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Anybody else? Roll call, please. Councillor Nicola? Yes. Councillor Spinelli? Yes. Councillor Vandal? Yes. Councillor Clements? Yes. Councillor Livingood? Yes. Councillor Micucci? Yes. Councillor McDonald? No. Six yes, one no. Thank you. 45, vote to ratify the agreement with Fuss and O'Neill in the amount of $78,000 for re-engineering design and permitting services in order to stabilize the slope of the reservoir number five dam. So moved. Second. Madam Chair, uh, we didn't, we failed to put in there an appropriation line, so if I could request and appropriate uh, funds from water retained earnings in the amount of 78,000 to fund said request. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. Any discussion? Nothing? Roll call, please. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vando? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Seven yes? 46, vote to appropriate funds in the amount of $750,000 from water retained earnings based upon our current construction cost estimate for construction, police, and engineering oversight for reservoir number five supply and Eastford Road clean and line. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Um, I'd like you, if, uh, if I could, Mr. Clark, just to briefly explain to the public what we're spending this money on. Sure. Thank you. Uh, this actually has two components to it. One of them is to, um, to take and reline, uh, basically clear out and reline uh, the Reservoir 5 supply. We actually have right now five reservoirs and one feeds the other one where we actually pump it up. 
Uh, the reason why we do that is because it was a gravity line that has um, basically been, been corroded that we have not cleaned out. So this is an opportunity to spend this money to go through, reline that, and clear that out. We do anticipate, I don't have the number right in front of me, but by not having to run the electric uh, pumps to pump the water and to do it by gravity, we do anticipate a fairly good uh, electric savings by doing this, that part of the project. So that's something that the infrastructure has been there. It just has never been cleaned out to accomplish that. I believe that's the lion's share of the, the money too. On the Eastford Road, um, very similar. We have a line that over time, it's not that unusual for corrosion to occur, different sediments build up. And we do have some water quality issues on Eastford Road that we anticipate that by when we clean and line that, that we will improve the water quality issues in that in that section of the line. And just one thing, I know some of these numbers are, are fairly large. We've been successful in increasing the amount of retained, earning, retained earnings that the town has. And this year we've made a conscious effort that instead of borrowing uh, money to do some of these projects, that we are gonna pay for some of these projects to save the rate payers. The water rates this year were, were at zero. Uh, the retained earnings went up and we wanted to use some of those to improve the overall system. So the 750 is coming from water retained earnings for that purpose. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Councilor Spinelli. Was there a question on this one where we were leaking? Wasn't there something during the presentation at the subcommittee where we were leaking or there was an estimation that we were leaking up to 20 million gallons of processed water a day on the Eastford Road section that yeah. is now to be replaced also? I don't believe it was 20 million gallons per day, but I think I mean, it was no, 20, 20, 20 million, million gallons per, per, year. per year. Yes, this of is processed this is the water that we are already spending money to process and we're throwing this away so that. That's correct. Okay, thank you, that's a good point. Anything further from anybody up here? Okay, could we have a roll call vote, please? Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 47, vote to ratify the agreement between the Town of Southbridge and Stantec Consulting Services in the amount of $45,000 and to appropriate these funds from water retained earnings for the engineering of the Denison Hill water storage tank. So moved. Second. Discussion. Okay. I have one question on this, if I might, to mm -hmm. you. Doesn't Denison Hill already have a water storage tank? Yes, it does. Those water storage tanks have to be cleaned and, and maintained, so this is part of the uh, annual maintenance. Oh, okay. So it's it's... It's engineering or maintenance? Well, there's nothing simple in that. Uh, well, in engineering, engineering gives me the idea that you're building something. Yeah, but no, it's actually to go through the process of how it's going to be cleaned and how it's going to be maintained. I see. But I don't know if, since he's here and he's dressed so well, maybe give him an yeah. opportunity to comment. Good evening, Tom Daly, DPW Director. Um, just for clarity, it's engineering to actually for repainting the tank inside and out. Uh, the tank currently has on the different surfaces inside and out anywhere from 8 to 25 percent corrosion with his missing paint. We have raw steel exposed. So we had an inspection done in 08 and they said we should do it within the next few years and that was four years ago. So that's what this is for. This is the engineering to put the specifications together, et cetera, to uh, strip and recoat the tank. So this isn't the actual work, no. it's the engineering this to get engineering. to the work. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have anything? Roll call, please. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. 48, vote to ratify the agreement between the Town of Southbridge and Stantec Consulting Services incorporated in the amount of $26,700 and to raise and appropriate, appropriate seven, said $26,700 from sewer retained earnings for the sludge dewatering system Wow, <laughs> at the wastewater treatment plant. So moved. Second. Any discussion? 
Councilor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, through you to the manager. I'm in looking at this one and, and perhaps even some of the next one. Um, how, why wasn't this included in the previous project? Didn't we have a big project up there to take care of the uh, the water treatment? I mean, the sewage treatment plant. And yeah, this is a, a specific component to the operation. Basically, we take the um, the byproducts of what comes out of the the treatment. The the I think it was about an eight to nine million dollar project was to add some capacity, change some of the other elements of the plant. This is one that is exceptionally uh, mechanical in nature. Uh, we have two units that are up there that were previously put into place that aren't as functional, and we're constantly wanting to have a more efficient um, process. So this money would actually give us the ability to come in and design out a more efficient, cost-effective, process for dewatering. So this is one of those that we anticipate will hopefully not necessarily pay for itself in whole, but over over time would be a benefit. Thank you. Thank hopefully you, Madam Chair. Any further discussion on these on these votes? Roll call please. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Um, 49, vote to ratify the agreement between the Town of Southbridge and Sherborne cons Consolidated Incorporated for sludge conveyor work at the wastewater treatment plant and to replace belts and required rollers, bushings, et cetera, as per attachment C in the amount of $125,000 and to appropriate $50,000 from sewer retained earnings. So moved. Second. Any discussion? One question to you, Mr. Clark. The appropriation of $50,000 is part of the 125? Yes. Okay. The, it came in, we had budgeted in the operating budget 75,000. The bids came in at 125,000. Now the one above does dewatering. That actually takes the water content out of the solids. This one is actually the conveyor that transports it from the plant into the compost area. And this is one that has just over time worn out again. Very mechanical process, something that needs uh, updating. But this one we had budgeted 75. The bids came in higher and we had to pay 125. Well, we know 125, so we need a supplemental 50. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. A roll call, please. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 50, vote to ratify the agreement between the Town of Southbridge and Stantec for phase one of the airport reconstruction in the amount of $134,391.81 and to approve the appropriation of funds in the amount of $134,391.81 from the insurance claims in excess of $20,000 account to the tornado damage chapter 44, section 31 account. So moved. Second. Discussion? Just, just a little bit on the, the nuance of this. Um, by Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 31, when you have an insurance claim that's in ex excess of $20,000, you have to deposit it into a specific fund and then draw those funds off of it. The town has received $875,000, plus or minus, uh, for the airport damage, and this would start the design process to get us back into the airport. Uh, business. This is basically for the blue hangar uh, that was damaged in total and to start to do uh, the hangar that was attached to the terminal building. Phase two would be the yellow Quonset hut hangar uh, and the terminal building in, in one. So basically there's four different items that are being covered. This actually gets the, uh, the design on phase one uh, underway. Um. This has nothing to do with a water line up there. I thought I heard you say something this evening about that, no? Yes. Um, 
Um, or is that for the the money that you're you're looking for from the that four hundred thousand dollar or five hundred thousand? Yeah, one of the one of the components grant. right now. There, there's multiple issues going on at the airport. One component of which is that we have a private well and a private septic system on site, and the well certainly for fire purposes would not be adequate. And DEP has said that we need to improve and provide public water to that site. So that would be essentially, if we get funded for that, that takes away some of the, the necessity for some of the funding of the airport rebuild. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have anything? Roll call, please. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Agenda item. Number 51, vote to discuss a potential amendment to section 10-104 enforcement under the bylaw by amending line number seven, quote, schedule D to F to A to C, unquote, which would change the fee structure from $250 to $300 down to $25 to $100. If voted affirmatively, send recommendation to the Board of Health for their input and recommendation. So moved. Second. I'm assuming a discussion is going to take place, so take a show of hands. Councilor McDonald, go first. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I don't believe we have to send this, or we should send this to the Board of Health. I mean, we're the legislative body for the town. We've received a significant amount of input, at least I am sa uh, satisfied that I've received enough citizen input to say the fine structure is too high. Um, the Board of Health's domain is not bylaws or the legislation part of the town. They're the Board of Health to regulate the health laws. Um, so I'd make a motion to amend agenda item 51 to vote to amend section 10-104 enforcement under the bylaw and keeping it all there and then striking out the last sentence and let's just get this done and then go in for a second and third reading. Okay. And I so move. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, by making a motion, it makes it difficult at this point for anybody else to speak on the subject. So I ask that you hold back on that. I withdraw my motion. Thank, thank you, Madam you. Chair. Councillor Clements. Thank you. I appreciate that too, Councillor McDonald, because the point and the intent at the last meeting, the HS meeting, was to bring it up so that everybody could have a little input on this since it was such a, um, you could say controversial, I hate that word, but um, issue. So just, just to your point to the, um, one of the things that was pointed out to us and the reason we thought it would be a good idea to bring it to the Board of Health a bit was that um, in, in our material on page 7 under Code of Bylaws, towards the bottom where Mr. Caprera, Attorney Caprera circled some information for us. He, um, the enforcement officers are the health agent and the health inspector in this area, so we were just being mindful of that and, and looking for input. It does not have to affect it one way or the other. It's input, and we just felt um, that getting, having them review the information too. So that's that's why the wording was done the way it was done on here. Um, well, personally, I think the, the $25 is a little low from what our discussion was there. I do think that the $100 is more appropriate on, on what's been happening. Certainly, we've made a dent in what's been going on, and I think that um, having trash compliance on a 20-year-old bylaw has been positive for the town in terms of the way the town has looked, the more the cleanliness and, the, and what we've been able to do with it. Obviously, the bylaw committee will be going through and, and looking at this in a more uh, thorough manner in terms of the rest of the components. Some of the people we still have concerns. I do on the clear bags. Covers are important, um, but it is my understanding that we are we are uh, really looking to enforce the idea that your trash is in a container to keep it off the streets, covered as best as possible, and, and making um, for a better uh, environment in our community, a cleaner environment in our community. So I support the fee structure going um, to an A through C structure. This would also alleviate us having to really change that bylaw up more, um, it's more difficult to change that bylaw up into just specifying just one amount. Right now the bylaw has A through C and it has D through F. This particular bylaw uh, was enforced by D through F. So to make it a little easier and a little more manageable at this point, going with A through C made sense, uh, I believe, to a number of us on the committee. So 
That's my input. I certainly would like to see a better fee structure and a better um, deal at compliance in terms of uh, getting the tenants and the occupants to comply. Also, uh, we did discuss that a bit because the bylaw does say that. One of the things that uh, we are going to put forth immediately, pretty much, I, I believe, was, the, was that the, the landlords, if a landlord is marking his containers and is making sure that the, you know, that he's told his, his um, or her tenants what the rules are, given them the information, and they still choose to break the rules and, and the landlord gets a ticket and comes in, and perhaps there are pictures by the police, that type of thing. We will be taking, um, the, the hearing officers will be very much adhering to recommendations from the, from the committee and from the town manager in terms of being able to, if the, if the property owner is willing to specify that tenant, who that is, then they will be willing to remove the fine off of the landowner, the, the landlords, and uh, appropriately apply it to the tenant, and then the tenant will be responsible. So that's something that came out of the meeting that I think is a, a very good and beginning to enforcement in the right to making the occupants follow our bylaws and not just the taxpaying uh, landlords or homeowners. So um, I think we've had some good discussion. That's my Madam point. Chairman. May One I, moment, please. I, I'm going to hear the council first, and then I will take okay, citizen input, okay? Anybody else wish to come forward with anything? Councilor Vandal. Madam Chair, I'd like to thank Councilor McDonald for bringing this to the forefront. He's the, uh, f this was his baby. Thank you. Okay. Um, anybody else wish to? Councilor Spinelli. Um, I attended the subcommittee meeting, and although I am not necessarily in favor of rate of reducing these fines, I also made it very clear, and I want people to know that I don't believe that these fines are there, as has been characterized by some, to raise money and raise revenue for the town. I don't believe that was ever the case when this bylaw was written over 20 years ago. Um, this bylaw was passed at the same time where we had the junk cars and we had a number of um, occurrences where the town was being defaced. But I did agree to move this forward because I think it does, uh, it does need to be discussed and to uh, vilified one way or another. The, uh, to me, the important thing about this bylaw is the result that it seeks to obtain. And the figures certainly show that from 16 to 42 percent is, uh, is a huge increase in recycling and that increase in recycling also is a huge increase in the appearance of our town and what our town looks like. And I'm just concerned about the fact that the possibility exists that if we reduce the rates, um, that we could go backwards. And I'm not interested in seeing that. But I certainly feel that, it, that this topic deserves discussion and I would like to see the Board of Health in, input into it also as a courtesy, if nothing else, but to uh, allow them to also bring it forward. And that's why I, I believe the wording was put forth like this to allow other people to put an input into it also so that more people can participate in, in what we're trying to do here. That's okay. my comments. Thank you. Any, any other councillors have anything they want to add? Councillor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to the town manager. Mr. Clark, if we um, make this amendment and that fee structure is A, B, and C, the 20 50 and $100, do we have to follow that or can we set $100? I mean, what leads up to a $25, a $50, or a $100 fee? I, I think, well, I'll answer that a couple ways. Um, one, I think the current process that we use, we have revised and we have significantly reduced the number of fines that have been issued, and we are fining people only after a certain amount of education has failed, and we record what that education is to the individual homes. So that number has significantly reduced. To the point, to the specific point, the way the motion was made the other night 
was that under section 1-111 violations and penalties, it lays out a fine structure for all those penalties. And it has a A section, a, a through C and a D through F. Because this was to amend section 10-104 and change from schedule D through F shall be applicable, you would, we, would, we would have to change section 1-111 in order to effectuate a different schedule than what's laid out there, the 25, 50, and 100. That's not to say that that's not impossible, but just the way this was structured at the subcommittee, it almost lends itself to either that uh, process or coming up with, with a different one. Bless you. Okay. I, um, I'm concerned and I agree with Councillor Spinelli. Based on your numbers this evening, Mr. Clark, I mean, when you talk multifamily and single family homes, you know, there's probably a difference of 90 to 100 in the citations. Mm -hmm. um, I would like it to be as less complicated as possible. I know it's an understanding with the general public that you know, you get a $250 fine and it's not so. I believe there's a process of four to five steps before you receive that fine. Correct. Um, and you're very diplomatic in saying the educational process. And, you know, I believe you're referencing one through four before you get that $250 mm -hmm. fine. So I think that's something that we have to take into consideration along with the general public that, you know, the town is certainly not slapping you with a $250 fine for an open container um, or you're not using clear bags. There's a process and I, I think the town's being fair. Um, and you also have the hearing. So I would ask councilors to really consider this. It, it, it's working. I think we have a great service. It's very simple. You know, uh, you don't concern yourself with the fine. I understand what Councillor Clemens is speaking of because of the multi, the, the number of multifamily homes we have in Southbridge. But it's easy. There are not too many communities and towns have what we have, and that's to leave your home and put your trash on the front steps, and it's picked up with little rules. So I would ask the council's consideration and think about this before we move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Councilor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll uh, refrain from my amending, amending the motion in light of this information, but I think it's important for the public to know that we're not moving forward. I mean, we're moving forward with getting it discussed, but doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to change. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilor. If nobody up here has anything, let me let me throw my keys. Go for it. Um, I think that going to A to C with a twenty-five, fifty, one hundred dollar fine, twenty-five for first offense, fifty for second offense, and a hundred dollars for the third offense. I think that's plenty. You know, I mean, how much people people are going to learn? They're going to learn fast if they get up to the third offense and they have to pay a hundred dollars. Thank you. Anybody else? Go ahead, Mr. Cowett. Uh, good evening, Roger Cowett, to tell you Avenue. One question I have is, uh, when does Mr. Moran have a time frame when we have one day pickup of trash and salvage? You know, it, salvage has cleaned up a lot since we had recycling program and, and containers and everything. But if we had a one day a week pickup, it would really, really clean the main, uh, all the streets of salvage because there's a lot of this trash on five days a week on the sidewalks in the town of salvage, and on one day, trash pickup will be really, really uh, moving really forward, and I think you would increase, uh, eliminate trash bags for people that don't live in salvage dropping off in neighborhoods, and I think this here would really, really improve the quality of life in salvage because it would be a heck of a lot cleaner. Thank you very much. To answer that, if you'll allow, um, I've actually had a conversation with a couple of members of the Board of Health, and I know they're, they're in talking 
to Casella about that. But it's, it's not that simple. That's very expensive. And you know, the one thing that, that I don't hear enough up here, and I haven't in seven years about this whole process, is that everybody wants to tweak it, everybody wants to change it, but nobody ever, ever says how lucky they are that they get their trash picked up for nothing. It's a given now. Everybody just, that's, a, that's just the way it is. Just cross the line and go into another community and you're gonna find out that is not the way it is. So, I, you know, with all due respect regarding weekly pickup, which would be wonderful, I suppose, for some people. To me, it really, I don't see it as being a hardship every other week, but that's just me. Um, you gotta stop and think about what you got. And you're getting an awful lot. I, I agree with Councillor Marcucci. We're getting a lot for, you know, on this. And, and we don't hear about that. We're just constantly trying to tweak it. I wanna say that this item was, was placed on the agenda. And as the chair of the town council, it's my, it's my obligation to review the, the, the agenda and determine what goes forward and what doesn't go forward. And I actually wrote something down, if you'll bear with me. I placed this item on the agenda as it came to us via subcommittee vote to bring it to the council to look at it again. We've had a symposium on the trash fees and how to, how, to, how to get your trash together. That was led by Councillor Clements. We've discussed this issue on more than one occasion because it's come up in Citizens Forum. Things have come up in, in way of vote and it's, brought, it's opened it up where we've talked about it again. If this was a year where we didn't have a committee that was set up to address our bylaws and recommend possible changes, I would entertain a council vote on whether to adopt an amendment to reduce the fee. But it just so happens that we have a bylaw committee. And I spoke to the chair of that bylaw committee last Thursday. And to date, nobody has approached the bylaw review committee and talked about this issue. Nobody. Considering how many times I've read letters to the editor, people have come to that podium, People up here have discussed it, and not one concerned citizen has approached the bylaw review committee and asked them to take a look at this. That's telling. Thank you. I would accept a motion. I'm going to finish. I would accept a motion by the council to have the council request that the bylaw review committee take a look at this. If they want to get, rec get a recommendation from the Board of Health, that's up to them. But we were asked to form a bylaw review committee, and we did. And now we're going to get, be making amendments while they're in the middle of reviewing all of these, these bylaws for changes. Why have a bylaw review committee? I, uh, I don't want to undermine their efforts. And I'm not comfortable setting the violation fees when we have a bylaw review committee who can discuss this with anybody who has, has suggestions on how to, how to change it. That's, it's just as open as the charter review committee was. You can, you can contact any member of that board. You can attend a meeting. You can you know, give them something in, in way of what you would like to see the bylaw look like, how you would like to see the schedule change, and they'll look at it. So it doesn't make sense why we would do this. And just one other thing. Do you actually think that if they changed the, crime, the penalty for murdering somebody, people would complain about what the penalty was? And the reason I say that is because if all you do is what you're supposed to do, and it's pretty simple, there's no $250 fee. You know, everybody's talking like they're going to break the law and they're going to get charged $250. I'm not quite sure I understand the mindset. I'm hearing tonight that we've got a 40, almost 43 percent recycle rate. That's never happened. Is that a coincidence? Or is that this bylaw actually working? 
and yet we want to change it to $25 so people will do as they used to do and just pay the fine and leave the trash outside? I'm concerned about, about the mindset here, and I understand the, the part about the landlords, but if the landlords tell their people when they're collecting their rents or send them a letter and say, this is what we're, is expected of you, and keep a copy of that letter so that they've educated their tenants and they get one of these $250 fines, then they can come down to the town hall to one of these, these uh, hearings with proof that they've attempted to educate their tenants. And give the name to the hearing officer and the $250 fee goes to the offending party, which is how the bylaw actually reads, if anybody's taken the time to read it. So, you know, I'm not going to be supporting this. I, I've said it in the past. I think that sometimes you have to wait a little while on change and see how it, it affects things. So far, I don't see this, this as a negative change. I see it as a positive change. Um, if you, somebody wants to bring forth a motion to, to look at these fees tonight, I'm not going to support that. Um, and I'm just one of, how many of us are there? Seven this evening? But I would, I would be supporting a motion to send this where it belongs to the committee that's reviewing the bylaws right now. Not this committee. I'll make that in a full The bylaw motion. review committee. I'll second that. Discussion on that. You want discussion on that? Go ahead. Absolutely. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to let Councillor Clements go first. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. A couple of questions, uh, Mr. You to the town manager. When we've been doing the fines, we've been sticking with D, $250, correct? That's correct. We haven't accelerated 275, 300. That's correct. That's correct. So when it says D through F, technically we're only doing D. That's correct at this point. So to the question that was asked earlier in terms of A, B, and C, because I was pretty clear that A, B, a and B aren't too exciting to me, I was just working on getting a change, the $100 seemed like a reasonable number. Why is it we cannot just enforce with a C, and they come to their hearing and, and do their thing? for the $100. Why is it that we aren't addressing a D through E, F, E, D, and F schedule versus an A, B, and C schedule? Well, I think or is the, that possible? I think the answer to that is uh, obviously uh, D is the 250 is the minimum in that schedule. So we would start with the minimum and then through the concept of progressive, then progress up. But we aren't. Well, in fairness, I don't know how many people received multiple fines. I don't know how many people were in that category. I, I don't have that information tonight, so I don't know how many folks got a second or third violation. Well, a number of landlords have talked to me about getting as many as four in, in one week from various uh, properties that they own, even mm -hmm. though they give the information to their tenants with no dis disrespect to the, the chairwoman. I, I don't see how penalizing investors in our town is going to make it better. And while we could wait for the process of the bylaw review committee, I still would entertain changing this here at our level where we can do that. So I, I, I don't think I ever said that I was penalizing the investors. I didn't say you did, Madam Chair, I, but you said to send it to bylaw. So I'm saying, for me, it's penalizing the investors in our community by not by thinking that the people that live in their, in their housing is, are going to comply without being, it being really enforced. So we end up with the investors getting the 250 and having to go through all the hoops. I just think the $100 or less, if it had to be, is, is a more fair, um, accurate number to put on the citizens of this community. And that's just my opinion because I've been approached by numerous landlords, especially landlords. And there are even some that actually say the 250 is fine. The problem they still have is enforcing it, and what can we do about that? So they understand what we're trying to do. They feel it's, it, it's you know, that's fine in, in one sense, but it's, it's very high, and it makes, it puts a very big burden on them to get other people to not, to stand up and be accountable. That's part of the problem in the world today. People aren't accountable, and that we blame the wrong people. So I just believe that this fee structure is wrong, and I still stand by that and would prefer that. That's, I'd like to clarify that, though, because I don't think you clearly understand what I'm saying. 
I am not saying that we penalize the landlord. The landlord has given his tenants something explaining to them that this is how, how the, the trash is to be put outside, and he, receive, he or she receives this, they can bring that, that letter that says that they've, they've done such a thing and give us the name of the offending party. Mm -hmm. They can cooperate in that one way. They're out of it at that point. Then we go after the, the tenant who's actually committing the violation. Where's the penalty to the landlord and that he actually has to give us the name of somebody that we don't have and therefore we have to go with the owner of the property? Cooperation is what, is what that says to me, not, penal, not penalty. It says cooperate with us and we will do what we need to do and go to the violating party. That's, that's all I'm saying as, in re, as a response to this. Now, I, I, don't, I don't feel that the fee structure should change, but again, I am just one person. Councilor McDonald, you had something you wanted to add. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I agree with Councilor Vandal and Councilor Clements that mm -hmm. this needs to be reduced. I believe that way because I had been contacted by quite a number of people, citizens of this community, uh, one in particular on Sale Street, and they all had some stories. I mean, this isn't like, every week we have to put our trash out. It's not like the, the analogy of, of murdering somebody. I understand where you're going with that, but it's not akin to this because every week when somebody puts their trash out in the curb, they're at the mercy of somebody coming by and kicking it over, somebody coming by and taking the top, or the top not being put back on their trash can by the, by the contractor in several other scenarios. Uh, the, the bylaw review committee occurs every five years. It's not a, something that's a standing body. It is currently meeting. They're going to review this. We're going to get the input on that. Mm -hmm. I don't see the need to send it down there. I think this motion as written, after listening to some of the dialogue here, is good. Let's get the Board of Health input. Let's also get some more public input. But I don't expect the general public to know, or everybody out there to know, that the bylaw committee's meeting, but they know that we're their representative voice here and that we, it's up to us to legislate these changes. And so they've come to us, they've come to me at least, and uh, I'm going to continue to push forward to try to reduce this fee structure. Thank you, Madam mm -hmm. Chair. You're welcome. Councilor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. Respectively to um, Councilor McDonald, I don't think it's respectful for us to supersede a bylaw review committee, especially if they're active right now. I understand the importance. It's not going away. I, I understand the emotions that are involved in this, but if they're meeting now, I think it's, you know, out of due respect to that committee, we're kind of taking away from them and what they need to do for us. That's why I don't have a problem with sending it down to that committee and let them give us a recommendation. Things are working right now. It's nothing broke right now. I understand people are upset with that $250 fee. By the same token, there's a process. And I understand Councilor Clements and her plea also and I think for landlords, maybe it's something, uh, some type of contract that maybe our town attorney can help them with, something that has teeth, that they could, a contract could be written up, the landlords could come to the town hall, pick up a contract, make it across the board, and something that um, the hearing officer could abide by. But I don't think there's anything of an urgent nature right now. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Pulaski. Uh, Madam uh, Chairwoman, uh, respectfully, perhaps the reason people are going directly to the councilors instead of the committee, I know I went to uh, the charter committee on three occasions. There's a lot of input there, and their work was virtually ignored by the council. So it's easier just to go directly to the councilors because your message can be lost by going to the committee and then the council may choose. So by going directly to the councilors, it's a more efficient way of communicating one's concern. Uh, also, they aren't elected. Uh, I suspect that this chairperson of this committee has, uh, that it's up on the town's website. But uh, I consider myself 
having at least an average understanding of, of town government. I don't, I don't personally know who that chairperson is. And also, there's, there's something I hear, it, it really, I guess, it gets my goat when people say we have free trash pickup. I know we don't get a bill, but when you take into account, for example, the $7 million cost of the road, you divide it by the six or $7,000 homes, that's $1,000 per household. Plus, our real estate values went down at least 70% more than one surrounding town and at least 30% more than the other. So we're also subsidizing that landfill with our real estate values. And if one is to believe the 22 doctors that were against that expansion, we're also subsidizing that landfill with our health. So it's not free. I, I wish I could pay 200 to $300 a year and not have, you know, we only put in 4% of that landfill. So it's 96% from other towns. So it's not really free. It's only free if you consider the smoke and mirrors that are used to, to suggest that it's free. You know, health, health is an important thing. And it's, uh, we Madam have a health Chair, risk. that Thank has you, nothing Chair. to do with what's before the council right now. Well, in regard to that, perhaps a B, a, you know, starting at like, a, in, some people think 25, perhaps going from B to E, or even having A and have first offense, second offense, and go up because it's so frequent. Where it does, if you have a frequent abuser, they still get fined 250. And a person who has someone dumping trash in front of their house, if they don't want to bother coming down to go through a hearing to save 25 bucks, they eat the $25. But you have, it was an A through F or A through E, just have five fines, first offense, second offense, all the way up. And that, that would, should take care of everybody's concerns. Not hitting someone hard the first time and hitting the frequent offenders really hard, that, that may be the way to go instead of breaking up AD. That may be the, uh, when Mr. Spinelli, he knows better than anyone here, because he helped write it many years ago. Perhaps they thought at one time of starting with A and working out. I don't know. And thank you, Liz. Move the question. Which question? I was going to say, Madam, <laughs> Madam Chair, you, you do have two motions two that, motions. that you have before you. One is to refer to the bylaw committee, which I believe was oh, Darlene with a second from me, uh, from Dave. And then you obviously you have the main motion that was moved and seconded as well. So just where we are, we have I'll two I'll remove my motion right on the Clarify. item 51 as it was. Clarify what question you wish to be moved. Well, we're on the amendment, so that would be the one that would be The amendment moved. probably should be done first. Well, he, you refer to bylaw you're, review you're committee. You're going to withdraw his motion. I, just, I made a motion to move the question. I believe it has to be seconded. I don't think it has. But right. I'll and then that. he made a motion second. to uh, it was seconded. Somebody said. No, to move the question. Okay. Did somebody second, second the motion to I move did. the question? I do. You did? Second. Okay. Without further discussion, roll call, please. Can we be clear on what we're voting on? We're voting on the amended question to, to bring it to the by law review by committee. Law review committee. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? No. Councilor Clements? No. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Mycucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? No. Four yes, three no. It's referred to the by law review committee. It'll be referred to the by law review committee. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Okay. Councilor uh, Clements. Thank you, Madam Chair. Could we request, I mean, my concern on the Bylaw Review Committee is that they will not be producing their information for a year from when they were appointed, up to a year from when they were appointed. So this, these fees continue, the, the concerns continue, the fines continue. Is there any way that this is something they could take up sooner than later and make their recommendation before their full report? Or do we have to wait for the full year because they weren't enacted until, when did they actually come on board? It was a while it's after a while. the June election. They only came on board in this fall, I believe, or yeah. some last fall. So they really aren't gonna be report until next fall. So it basically puts it in the closet. So that's, that would be my concern, would be that this Well, I don't, think, I don't think they can just pick and choose and send things up as they, as they go through the changes. They're going to have to go through the body. And as I was told by the chair of the Bylaw Review Committee, Leonard Laporte, for anybody who, who isn't aware of that, um, they're halfway through. And they haven't come to this yet. 
Um, I can ask them to make sure that they give it its, you know, due diligence. Ask them to look at what you're looking looking for as a suggestion. Um, they're not changing everything in there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it may be sooner than later that this thing comes forward. And fall isn't that far away. Um, but I will ask them, and I will, I will show them this and how you wanted it, how, how you're interested in it being changed, and have them look at it from that point of view. Okay? Then one more request. Um, could we make sure that the bylaw review committee's meetings are listed on our calendar because I don't always they see them? You're right. They're not. And right. I and I questioned the other night when I did see Mr. Laporte leave yeah. the town hall. So I would prefer, okay. I would like to know when they are because while they're posted, I don't always go to the website. Absolutely. So. They should be part of the, uh, the um, meetings and board meetings that we, uh, we get a listing of. Yes, Councillor McDonald. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. With your indulgence, because this has been controversial, we do need to finalize the vote. We voted on the amendment. We do need to vote on the main motion to make Certainly. it final. Okay. So, we have a, a, for, um, a motion and a second on that. Mm -hmm. We've discussed it. Can we have a roll call vote on this? Councillor Spinelli? On the question. As amended, yeah. As amended. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Yes. There was a second motion. As amended. Yeah, as amended. As yes. amended. Yes. To refer yes. to. Yes. Council Vandal? No. 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 Question? No. Mm, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Councilor Clements? Okay. I'm still not clear. We're voting. We voted on the, the last one was the amendment. And now we're voting to do it as amended because they won't. Okay. Yeah. Because we just talked about setting it to subcommittee without. I mean, Wait, we it amended it to do that. So right. now we have to vote on the main motion, and basically, the I would expect that everybody would vote the same way they did on the amendment because mm -hmm. it's basically to send same it to. Thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure because right. it just seemed like we're voting. Yeah. No. It does. Council Livingood? Yes. Council Marcucci? Yes. Council McDonald? No. Council Nicola? Yes. Four yes, three now? Thank you. Okay. Agenda item number 52, Council is Forum. Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. I um, want to uh, thank Councillor Livingood for his service and wish him well. I know he's not leaving town, he's still around, so, but uh, thank you for your service on the Council. It's been a pleasure serving with you for the last two years. I also want to thank Conrad Vandal for being a tiger on the rail removal down on East. East Main Street, and I know for two years he's been talking about that, and also to the DPW and the manager for getting that done. There's a lot of people who are very happy. I, uh, I get some phone calls from that as well, so people are happy about that. I also want to thank a man who's dedicated a good portion of his life to this town over the last several years. He comes from a good family. I've known him since high school. We were in the band together, and that's Ronaldo Bernadone. In my judgment, he put forth a good effort and brought a good sense of judgment to his duties and capacities on the Board of Health and on the Liquor Board. It's not easy, but I think he's looked at the best interests of all parties concerned and he served the town well, and I just thank him for all the years of service uh, that he did. Uh, and also congratulate uh, Chief DeFranzo on being appointed fire chief and look forward to a successful tenure with him. And uh, that's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Spinelli. I would like to um, congratulate all the eighth graders who graduated this evening and all the awards they received. Um, I was able to, put, to uh, watch most of it, and uh, um, it's very encouraging to see these young people, and for a change, the place was packed, as it should be for all these functions that these kids go through, because they really are the future of ourselves. I'd also like to thank Councilor Livingood. It's been a pleasure not only to work with him, but to, uh, to have met him and to um, have him be a part of my life, and hopefully in some small way, I made his life a little bit better. Um, I think he's a credit, a very quiet man, God-fearing man, and um, I admire him greatly. It's been a pleasure to serve with him. 
and hopefully he stays in contact with us forever. Um, the Relay for Life. You know, I, I, I have to say this. I've kind of taken it for granted over the years, but I went up there Friday night. And the reason why I went up there is um, my daughter, who's a school teacher at uh, Charlton Street, is a member of one of the teams up there. And she was telling me how they put the little paper bags with the candles inside and they light it up and everything else. And um, she kind of coerced me into going up because she said I might find a couple of the bags very interesting. And um, I did, I went up there with my wife and I, we walked around, walked around a couple times and then I stopped at her site and One of the bags uh, had my mother's name. And the other bag had my mother-in-law's name. And they both uh, died from cancer. And the shame of it is, is that over the years, I just forgot all about that. And it's uh, something that's very easy to do. We're so busy trying to live our lives and our own lives, sometimes we forget what is and should be important to us. So it took my, one of my daughters to remind me just how important life really can be. And uh, I, I just want to say thank you, Erica. And thank you, Scott, for, for doing that. And my little grandson, Denver, for taking me around and making sure that I noticed this. Uh, what a wonderful occasion, and the weather was absolutely beautiful. There's organizations who do a wonderful job up there, the Lions Club for selling things and making the donations to this wonderful organization. And I think people should note that this year, they started off with more funds raised than they've ever had before. They started off with 102,900 and something before they even, before the opening ceremony. So it's just a credit to the people that are running it, that putting it on, and uh, it's a credit to the heart of the people of Southbridge who did it. And uh, I don't mean to be emotional. I just, um, I lost track of that fact. And so it was nice to um, go up there to see survivors, to see people who are honoring other people um, who care about this disease, and then um, to be reminded that it hits all of us in some way, shape, form, or another. Um, and on a little quick thing, and I don't mean to do this, I had, um, along with the eighth grade graduation that went on today, they also had a, a dinner dance that was put on for these eighth graders. And anecdotal, but a little story. Um, I was asked to chauffeur my grandson and his date to the dinner dance. And, of course, he asked me if I would drive the Mustang. And of course, it's been raining earlier in the week, and on Thursday night, it was a glorious night. So um, he told his date that it's just an old Mustang. And of course, if, uh, as Larry, Councilman McDonald can testify, it's really not an old Mustang. It's a four-year love affair for me, and it's a pretty nice car. So when we pulled up, the, the young lady's grandfather, eyes bugged out, and the mother bugged out, and her eyes, and the little girl, and we were driving down Main Street with the top down, and they were sitting in the back with the seat belts on, and they had their hands up, and of course, we became the center of attention, and so, you know, the point is that we have just wonderful kids in this town. They are just absolutely phenomenal. And their sense of life and well-being is just wonderful. And I'll get off my high horse, but um, Cameron, I, I love you. I'm very proud of you. And to uh, Megan Stella, his day, date that night, and who received numerous awards tonight, and to all the, all the kids who graduated from the eighth grade and who are going to become part of the first class at our new school. Kudos to all of you. Now I'll keep my mind. Thank you. Thanks, Councilor. <laughs> Councilor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. Really quick, um, Councilor Livingood, thank you for all your years of service to our community, and I wish you health and happiness. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Councilor Vandal. 
Oh, uh, thank you. I wish well to uh, Council Livingood, and uh, it was a joy working with you. Thank you. And on another note is I'd like to thank Mr. Clark, Tom Daly, Ron Trudeau, and all the Department, work, Department of Public Work workers for doing a great job in removing the railroad tracks. I got a lot of calls on it, and, and everybody seems to be happy. Uh, number two, through you to the town manager, are we going to pave from the school to the Charlton line up there at the new school? I mean, I, I went up there a couple of times, and I'll tell you, that road is horrendous. Yeah, we are going to pave uh, Tory Road going up from the school entrance up towards the Charlton Town and Line. That, is that going to be done before school? Uh, we're actually going to time it, so it will probably be done in, in the fall. So okay. we'll try to time it as okay. close as we can to school. And, and I want to wish my wife a happy 47, that's right, 47 years anniversary tomorrow. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Congratulations. Very good. Thank you, Councillor. Happy anniversary to you, too. Thank you. Councillor Clements. Thank you. Just a couple things. Um, first off, uh, if those of you who don't know, there is a wonderful event going on this weekend, Saturday, June 23rd. It's the Blessed John Paul II Paris Multicultural Fair. Um, and part of that has a 5K road race. So anybody who is interested perhaps in in uh, participating, there's still time to contact the parish and find out how you can sign up. I call it, a, it's called a road race, but technically it's a walk, run, or get yourself across the finish line um, and participate, support the community, this community event. So I encourage everybody to get out there and whether you go to the road race or you just wanna go and eat some of the wonderful um, multicultural foods that are gonna be available, I recommend um, heading out to the Notre Dame, uh, the Blessed John Paul II Parish on the former Notre Dame Church uh, grounds, um, because that's where it's gonna be held on Saturday. Uh, I'd also like to uh, say a wonderful job and kudos to the Charlton Street School for the great Flag Day celebration that they put on on June 14th. It was wonderful to attend and to uh, see all the wonderful children singing and, and doing a great job there. Uh, kudos to the, um, to the administration, all the teachers and those who helped put that program together, honoring the vets and the flag, and it was really a nice thing to be a part of. Um, and other than that, I think I'm done. Yeah. Thank you. Council? Oh, sorry, wait, Councilor Livingood. Keep up the good work with the optimists. I'm sure we will not, we will not, uh, your face will not be gone forever. It will be around. So congratulations and, and on your future endeavors uh, and uh, keep up the good work in our community. Right, thank, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> My turn. Your turn. Well, six years ago, I started on this council. I ran because the road was on the ballot. I wanted to see it done. And it got elected the people pushed, they wanted it done. And it kind of bothers me when I read this thing out of the paper that it's, you got to tell the whole story. I mean, the town voted they wanted this road. The town spent, before they even voted on it, over a million dollars. This is something that had been going on for years and years. I, I see the word detractors, and that's basically what it is. You detract it. It took five years to get the road started, I do believe. And then there's legal processes you have to go pull through before you can actually sell the road, which was just taken care of. And I know there are people interested in buying property on the road right now and are looking forward to getting an RFP so they can start bidding. To say that it's a road to nowhere, no. And it, as far as, uh, yeah, it's an empty industrial park. It could have been filled three years ago, but some people felt they didn't want it. But thank God it's done, it's moving forward. And sooner or later, we're gonna have an industrial park sitting up there. It always starts with one person and it'll go from there. It's been an interesting six years. I had six years on the Conservation Commission before that. And uh, I'm gonna miss being here, even though some days I won't miss being here. And the last thing I wanna do is, if it's all right with the council, in less than two or three weeks here, we've got a holiday coming up, and I think too many people really don't understand anymore what that holiday's about. And I heard a suggestion that this ought to be read, and since we're not meeting on July 4th, I thought it'd be a good idea to read it here as my last thing before the council. It's uh, the Declaration of Independence in Congress, July 4th, 1776. 
Excuse me, name. you're not going to read the whole Declaration of Independence, eh? It's only two pages. All right. I won't read the names. I'm okay. Sorry. Go ahead. It's three pages and eight. When, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with one another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and the nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with a certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute a new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light in transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are, evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object, invents a design to reduce them under absolutely, absolute despotism. In their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferances of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present King of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let the facts be submitted in a, to, to a candid world. I won't repeat that part, but I will re read the end. How's that? Thank you. In every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned for readiness in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. A prince whose character is thus marked at, by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of a free people. Nor have we been wanting in attentions to our British brethren. We have warned them from time to time of the attempts by their legislative, le legislature to extend an unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of the circumstances of our immigration and settlement here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnum magnanimity that we have conjured, conjured them by the ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondence. They too have been deaf to the voice of justice and of consanguinity. I'm sorry, but some of these words I've never seen before. We must therefore acquiesce in the necessity which denounces our separation and hold them as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies in war, in peace, friends. We therefore, the representatives of the United States of America, in general Congress, assembled appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions due in the name and by the authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British Crown, and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved and that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and to do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortune, and our sacred honor. It was signed by 56 people who basically at that time signed their death warrant if they'd have been caught by the Crown, they would have been killed. We have men and women in the armed services right now who protect this country and everything we hold dear. And one of, coming up on the 26th, I do believe, is a day of voting. 
That's one of the rights that came from this, and you're a fool if you don't take advantage of it. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Well said as usual. Thank you very much, Councillor Livingood. I'm going to miss you. Next meeting date? Monday, July 9th, 2012, reorganizational meeting, 7 p.m., town council meeting following immediately in council chambers, town hall. Okay. Agenda item number 54, vote to enter into executive session, Mass General Law, Chapter 29, Section 23B, to discuss strategy and, con and conduct collective bargaining. So moved. Second. Okay. With the intent to come out and vote, to potentially vote. That's what you're saying? Okay. Can we have a roll call, please? Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Livingan? Yes. Councilor Mike Ritchie? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. All right. Here we go. Oh my God. It hurts. It's getting better. 